In the YouTube algorithm, the people are represented by three separate yet equally important groups. The one that creates, the one that views, and the one that just can't help but react. Under Title 17, I am a member of an elite squad, also known as the Special Viewers Unit. These are the archives. Bop-ops. Boppies. Come on. Don't you dare. Bop-op. So the holes that, you know, Royal can't, that, that Royal and Rossi have dug by my fence, which I need to get fixed. It, it's going to cost me like 300 fucking dollars for a dump load of fucking dirt. But I need it to fill up the holes. Anyways, Royal can't get in. Royal's too heavy and big. He can't get out. But Bob Ops is like perfect. He's got like a million exits out of here. So I got to sit back here with him. These bugs are out of hand this year. They've been really, really bad. Anyways, welcome back, Lost Souls, Trolls, Assholes. It's Thursday. What's up, Tamara? None. I've been working on my skulls. By the way, I added some things to my wish list, my Team U wish list, because Amazon is ridiculous on their prices. And I added some things on my Amazon wish list, too, that I really, really want. Specifically, what I really want is that three-piece dog container, dog food container. It's got a scoop, a big part, and then on top, it has one for um, trees. Good mornings. Welcome back stars well i'm gonna be making a lot more when the se when the season's over and i can get my hands on more skulls i'm gonna try to keep it up throughout the year and i'm just gonna buy a bunch in bulk and just work on them consistently because i didn't realize that skulls were such a big deal i didn't realize everybody wanted one bless because you're going through a hurricane <laughs> But anyways, yeah, I added some things. Um, it's actually my cart on um, Team U. And I added like a couple of things like four different times because I put it in your face and it might be 98 cents. And next time you look at it, it's fucking $1.50. So it, excuse the fucking repeats because I know there's quite a few. And sometimes I don't think that it went to my cart and I hit it again. I'm like, oh, fuck it, whatever. But you guys get the general idea of what I'm looking for, like those kind of little pieces. So if you find them cheaper somewhere else, let me know. Team U is about the going rate. Amazon, ridiculous. You'll see the difference because I added some to my Amazon wish list. For 10 bucks, I can get the same thing on Team U for like $1.50. I can't wait for my package to come in. It's all, it's nothing exciting. It's all rhinestones and shit. Tim Zolciak vibes. I love Tim. Making sure he wasn't escaping. I've always liked Tim. I like Croy too. And I'm glad they're going, getting back together. How do you like my sweatshirt? No, it's just a baby black man. It's just a bop bop. Look, I can look around the corner with this. Where is he? It's just a bop bop. Why are you looking at me like you got caught doing something? Oh, he's pissing on the ball. Then he's going to kick like a little bull. Hey, pretty lady. <sighs> oh, and I put another one of these wigs on. Look, I have my real hair down there. I like, like, if you're not right up on me, it kind of blends in, I think. <laughs> but I added another one of these and another one of the butterfly ones. Because they get that. I love them to death, but they get ratty easily. Very easily. Come here, Bop-Bop. I don't want him escaping through the hole. What? Nobody likes my uh, shirt or everybody does. I love my bop ops. That's why I'm watching them. And Doug's at his girlfriend's house and his mom is uh, babysitting her friend's dog and it's just safer for him to be over here. So I was like, of course I'll take the bop ops. You got one bird and what? Thank you, PJ.
You got one in what? What? I missed that one. Bop bops. Don't you dare. Well, Biden did his little speech and he said that he had his men there in Maui before the fires hit. Now, why the fuck would your men be or, to assess, you know, at the next plan or to come up with the next plan? Now, why in the fuck would you have people there ahead of the fire? He fucked up. This dude is just unbelievable. Like, for being a crook, like, can you at least make it look better? Can you at least go? <laughs> this is terrible. And America, can we please stop picking the oldest fucking people available to represent us? Like Pelosi and what's that other dude that keeps breathing up and shit? I'm tired of him. You got Biden falling upstairs and. Yep, they were setting them. That's exactly why. They're setting it up. And then, did you hear something? On, um, I know, Weezy. I believe that, too. I totally do. And now I believe that they're setting all Trump's court dates and everything, trying to make it to where he can't run. Making it impossible to run. Ridiculous. Fuck them all. Bop bops? A little shit escape. You want snacky? Bop bops. Royal's feeling so much better, I can tell. Yes, you are. You're a good boy. Because look, I can just tell. Get it, Royal. He's making sure that Jackson didn't get any of the zones that he has in. So, anyways, <clears throat> hey, Anne. Hey, let it go. It was probably frozen because I wasn't on screen for a second. Or you think it's frozen, but it's not. I just sat down. And then kicks like a bowl. Okay, so listen. When is it time to harvest the damn potatoes? I'm tired of asking, and I think I just feel like it's about time. But I don't want to do it premature or anything. The flowers are starting... They're having a high school game tonight. And that's why you hear the marching band in the back. Um, the flowers are kind of closing up now. And like the vines, one is grown around my fucking shepherd's hook. The other one is go growing up my house. It's starting to get really cold. Like this morning, it was 50 degrees. I'm thinking it's about time. I don't know. You guys are plant mamas out here. Tell me what to do. Well, they haven't wilted over yet. They're thriving. The plant, the flowers that are on them do look a little like it's cold. Hmm. The same here. It's hot as shit last week. And now we're like, it's free. Like I'm in a sweatshirt. I'm just, you know, I'm just wondering. This is the first time I've ever grown potatoes. Might have vines. I mean, it's like suffocated my bush that was beside it. I got some like mean ass potatoes growing. Some rotten potatoes. Royal, no. Ew, Royal's got a rat in his mouth or a mouse. He caught a mouse. Royal, stop. No, Royley, that's a chipmunk. Royal, no. He's gone. He's gone. That fucker's gone. Ooh, I don't want to watch him eat it.
You say. You say, you nasty fuck. Say. No! Stay out there! I'm going inside. No! Get away from me! You go eat your, your thing. No. I can't look at you right now. I can't believe you did that. Oh my god. He's a murderer. That just fucking disgusted me. I can't look at him the same right now. No, you fucker. Go out there and eat it. I can't believe you, Royal. It's a chipmunk. Baby box. Royal got you guys dinner. That is going to be the nastiest fucking shit I've seen in a long time. I thought it was a mouse at first, but then the fucker was like big. That was a damn, that was a chipmunk. Remember this? I painted this. I think it's so cute. He wants in now. I'm going to go get him in because I don't want to fucking eat. Come on, Bubbos. I can't believe it. <sighs> what can I do? Really, what can I do? He's a murderer. I'm not looking at him right now. I just I also don't want him to fucking eat it, so I brought him in. That thing could have rabies. We don't know. I've done sprayed my leg with bug spray and shit. Then he wants to do that. Ugh. No, Bob Ops is in there on the couch. Bob Ops is fat and full. Right before I went live, I fed them and they ate. So I split. Royal got the majority of it. Um, dog food. And for a little extra treat, I put a can of cat. They love cat food. I put a can of cat food over each one. And then I put a handful of shredded cheese. And then I had some leftover hot dogs. I only had two in the package. So I cut those up into little pieces and put them on top. So, Bob Ops is fat and full. I took him out to poop. That's why I just did the exchange so that he won't poop in my fucking house. And now he's in, he's on the couch. When I walked in there, he's on the couch, passed out. I turned the TV on for him. Bob Ops is like that. He gets full and he'll just pass out. Whereas Royal, he grazes all day. He never eats like that to him, which is normal dinner plate, but. Now he's going to chill after he murdered a fucking animal, a, a groundhog, a, whatever the hell it is. Not a groundhog, a chipmunk. I do every once in a while just because, you know, I want Bob Ops to like it here, you know? So I get just a little special shit here and there. For dinner, I had Subway. I had a coupon, six ninety nine for a foot long. Those were the coupons that came out Monday. I don't know if it's nationwide, but um, got mine. And I was like, hell yeah. Also on there, there's two buy one, get one free footlongs. And then there's a deal, three footlongs any kind for $17.99. That's not money to do with my parents. I was going to show my mom that one, especially since she gets paid <laughs> tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I thought that was a damn good deal. And I'm sorry, $6.99, that includes uh, you got a bag of chips and a drink too. So it was like a whole damn meal. I ate like a quarter of the sandwich. I'm going to eat the rest of it tonight and I'll eat the other half tomorrow. I just got a, I got a cold cut or a. Uh, not a cold cut. A damn uh, All-American Club. Oh, God. My cunt. What are you doing here? You're back to terrorize?
Much better. Now I can see. That light was at an angle and it was fucking me up. Who can jump? I thought he was too little. Hey, Lemur. Who's too little to jump? Surely you're not talking about Bob Bobs. Bob Bobs can get up anywhere. Well, on the couch and shit. Roy Lee, how's your ear doing? Looking better. Looking a lot better, isn't it? Feel better? Yeah. You're a good boy, other than you killed chipmunks. What's up, Miss Chardonnay? And Gracie, I don't even think that I said hi to you, even though I've been sitting talking to you. So, yeah, my big hoopla right now is, no, it's the same one. You see that one before last. See, my real hair is down there. Um, just getting them damn rhinestones in. And I got excited news in about a week to share with you guys. Very exciting news. Chubby Cherub. I did not say hi. Well, I'm saying hi now. I got exciting news for everyone. My Patreons already know, but they're going to keep it on the hush. Um, but yeah. Bob. Bob can get up on the couch. He can get up on the fucking recliner and hunt the hell out of my lobster pillow. He's been doing it all damn day. I was sitting outside earlier smoking a cigarette. And I heard a bunch of huffing and puffing and I look through the screen. I adjust my eyes and I see what he's doing. He's totally taking advantage of my lobster, but he always has with that pillow. <clears throat> what, Peekaboo? Bass Pro Fishing, yeah. Yeah, he can He can jump up on the couch, but like beds and stuff like that, no, you got to put him up there. At Doug's house, he has a little staircase that goes right to the bed. But my couch sits so low, he can jump up there and he can jump up into my recliner too. But other than that, he can't jump up on anything else in my house. Like, not definitely not my bed. And so I got a little pervert on my hands, and then I got a murderer too. I mean, I got a hell. What a zoo I got! Jeez, Bob is an asshole. Drama squawks all the time. I love them all. I love these things, right? Okay. So today I was at Walmart and uh, I was looking for a turkey. And by the way, all they had was the turkey breast. And I asked the lady, can you go, do you have any big frozen turkeys in the back? And she went and looked and looked and said they didn't. Um, she said, all they have is a bunch of frozen bread, like the little one. So I was like, never fucking mind. I went down the chip aisle just to see. And they had like this big container of these things, right? Like the pinwheels and they were chili lime. And I was like, okay, whatever. Add a little chili too. I might like it. Dude, horrible. Instantly, when I took a bite, I was like, this is going to give me heartburn. And I got a big case. It was only $2.97. And they're Mac brand. Maybe that's a difference, too. But terrible. I'm not going to eat these fucking things. They're going to... What the fuck is wrong with you? And they're going to cause me much heartburn. Because in a way... I got these at the Mexican grocery store. And they're absolutely fucking delicious. They're just lime flavor. There's no spice to these at all. That's probably why I like them so much. The ones that, the chili ones were spicy. Like when I say, damn, they dumped like chili powder. I think it was just plain chili powder on it. Fucking gross. Hmm. Not the wrong size of those. Just now noticed it. I got some trash bags and they're little bags. The fuck was I thinking? Probably saw the price and was like, yeah. Now I know why you get 75. They're, that's not going to fit my trash can. My trash can's like a 30-gallon one anyways. Because I go through a lot of trash. Are they like, no, they're not. They're not at all. You know what they remind me of? Do you like bugles? I love bugles. They remind me of bugles. They definitely got that taste. And they got like a, like a lime kick to it. I love it. I got to plug up my phone. It's going to go dead. I know. I'm not going to be able to use these. I just realized they keep sitting here. I was like, what the fuck? 
was I thinking? Push it in. There we go. Nothing interesting really going on tonight. Don't worry, Rosie. You're not missing much. It's just Thursday. It's Labor Day weekend. What are you guys doing for Labor Day? I feel like I should do something this weekend because it is the final weekend where anybody's going to be doing anything, but it's also not going to be too warm. So I'm wondering, I haven't heard anything. Like usually every Labor Day weekend, there's a party. I haven't seen anyone just talk about it, but I'm sure it's going on. So it's going to be a cold one, probably too cold to get in the water, but just to go vote for a little bit or whatever. Mm -mm. Not today. I had to do my little taste test thing today. Happy birthday, pretty lady. Happy early birthday. Stuff. Yeah, well, actually, I don't think like it's been rough for everybody just this entire year. Alone, this just this year has been a pain in the ass. Everyone that I know has went through something. Also, did you hear like supposedly on um, I think it's like October 8th or something. We're going to get like everybody in the world is going to get like this emergency thing. And it's like, like, you know, the emergency alerts that we get. Everyone's going to get that because they're like testing the emergency alert. This is my thoughts. They're getting us ready for like World War Three or some shit. Why does everyone in the world at, at the same uh, October 8th going to get this? You know, what are they preparing for? Hey, Billy. Daddy's here. Daddy's home, everybody. Home improvements. If I don't end up doing anything this weekend, I'll probably just do like 24-hour live streams or something on one of the platforms. Who knows? I get my Twitch back this weekend and I'll work on my skulls. I'm sure we'll have some kind of cookout on uh, Monday. With my parents. This year has flown by. <laughs> I feel like it was just my birthday. And we were crying. Well, I was crying and all that. I feel like it was just my birthday a couple months ago. It's not. It was like four months ago. Four or five months ago. My one friend is having a cookout, but it's like 45 minutes away, and I don't I don't particularly care on going out there, really. But that's um, Saturday night. I'm pretty sure Monday my parents will want to do a cookout of some sort, and I kind of got to participate in that. You know how that goes. I really want a fucking turkey. Maybe I can talk my parents into eating turkey for... They're going to be like, oh, no, we want something on the grill. And they're going to want steak or something like that. I can't shoot. I don't know, keep talking. I heard someone talking. That's what it's like. Who the fuck is that? Some turkey ASAP. I just want to make one. I love turkey sandwiches with like real mayonnaise on some white bread. Ah, oh, I can just feel it sticking to the roof of my mouth right now. Like turkey slices from the deli and shit. Like I like the peppered turkey from the deli, but I don't like like not. I mean, I really prefer just like hard turkey, like the real turkey sandwiches. You know what I mean? I've been trying to, PDQ, where have you been? Have you not been here the last couple of days? I've been trying to get a damn turkey. They're out of season. Like none, I asked Kroger to, or um, Walmart today. They could go back in the back and look and see if they had any turkey. She only had frozen turkey breast. I want a whole turkey. I've not asked Kroger yet. You know who's going to have it? Fresh Time or Meyer. Meyer has everything. Meyer has everything. 
And I asked my dad to pull everything out of the middle of it. I'm going to go find a turkey and fucking, you know what, and pluck its feathers and then all that shit. Well, I can't believe you asked such a question. Like, I haven't been searching for a damn turkey for like three or four days now. I did. Uh, I just found out that sometimes grocery stores, when they're off season, that they keep them back in the freezer. That's why I asked Walmart. Walmart declined. He said, no, we got turkey breast. That's not what I fucking want. I want a whole turkey. So maybe tomorrow or I can agree with my parents on it, too. I'll go to Kroger and ask them. And if they don't. To Meyer, I go. Meyer will have the damn turkey. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to cook the fucking turkey and I'm going to eat all the skin off of it and then I'm going to like cover it up and then go present it to my parents. Like, here's the turkey. I'm gonna, they're not going to know what to think, but I love the turkey skin. So I'm going to eat all the skin off and then take it over there to carve it up. My dad's got one of those knives that like move, it makes it easier. You got a freezer full of turkeys? I bet Biden has a lot of them, PDQ. A lot of them just running around the White House. Why are you panting like that? He's sleeping because he fucking had a busy day. Murder and shit. Nope, they're still there. We see it every day. Some of the turkeys are on cocaine, too. You hunt turkeys? I mean, I see them, like, randomly around, but mostly they're on farms and shit known. I see more chickens running wild, it seems like, than I do turkeys. Doug had what he thought was a turkey in his backyard, but it ended up being something else that looks like a fucking turkey. I can't remember the name of it, but he fed it until it disappeared one day. How do you know if a turkey's sick or not? Like, how do you know if you could eat a turkey? Like, the butcher opens it up and a bunch of fucking worms fall out. They're like, yeah, that's a bad one. And I see a lot of chickens. I don't see a lot of turkeys. Hmm. You know what we have a lot of around here is Canadian geese. And they always want to take their sweet ass time. Like, Walking across the road, you're not allowed to hit them. You're not allowed to do anything to them, and they're mean as fuck. We are covered with Canadian geese, and they shit everywhere. They'll like try to attack your car too. They didn't really. Why are they all here? Go back to Canada, dude. Nobody asked you guys to be here. And then you cover all the fucking lakes and shit everywhere. And then hold up traffic crossing the damn road. Have the nerve to fucking attack a truck. And I just, I don't get those things. Go on. Yeah. They're mean as fuck, too. I wish all the eagles would come down and snatch up them sons of bitches and eat them. No, I went to Michigan one time. Uh, well, not one time. I've been there many times, but I went there one time to see Detroit. And I swear to God, I've never seen so many fucking Canadian geese in my life. I was like, oh, hell no. Turkey cotton candy? No. I didn't know that there even was such a thing. And I don't know if I would like um, cotton candy. It's sweet and turkey. That's what I'm going to do. When I make a turkey, I'm going to make, I'm not going to make mine sweet. I'm going to make it peppered. I'm going to make a peppered turkey. But a fuck ton of blackened turkey. Frederick's arts in your face. Frederico?
I know so much animal talk tonight. Change the fucking subject. I got a box of crystals. Should I charge them? I, I probably should. I got a lot of crystals. People have sent me quite a few over the years, and I bought a few, too, thinking they were cool and shit, and I do nothing with them but sit them in a box. I don't know. People say it, like, brings them good luck and shit. I don't know. And so anyways, guys, I've been sitting here, like, I'm a reasonable person, okay? I feel like I'm pretty fucking reasonable. But the other night, remember when I was drunk, story of my life, but remember when I was drunk, and then you heard, wake your ass up, and then all of a sudden music started playing? So I've been really like beating the hell out of my mind about this. Like what the hell happened? And this is what my logical brain has come to the conclusion of. I think this is what happened. When I went down like this, I think I accidentally hit the, a song on the iPad. And then when I probably, when I heard that and my arm hit again, it immediately hit another song. So it was probably like, it was probably starting something else or a, a podcast or something or clicked in on something. And then immediately when I jumped up, it clicked another song real fast, which happened to be Bruno Mars. That's the only fucking way the only logical conclusion I can come up with because the iPad was in my fucking lap. Right. And you see me, I'm down like this. Well, I must've moved my arm or something and, and hit a video. And then once it started playing, it, it scared me. So I jerked again and I hit another song. That's what I think happened. Cause I rewatched that shit over and over again. Sounds like a radio. It, it sounds like a radio or something. And there, I don't have a fucking radio. radio's in the kitchen. I have no other electrical uh, electronic devices out here other than what I had that night, my iPad and my phone. That's not a fucking radio, dude. Mm. And then last night I was making fun of someone and my fucking iPad said, that's not nice. Did you guys catch that? I'm like, what the fuck? Am I hallucinating? I knew damn well I heard it. I've seen that clip today too. Who knows what I click? I want to go back in the history. Let's go back in the history of my iPad. And see what could have been. Because I'm telling you, and I don't believe in fucking a ghost all of a sudden starts talking to me when I'm fucking drunk at 3 a.m. Where the hell does he when I'm fucking sober? You know what I mean? And fully aware and sitting there putting diamonds on skulls and shit like that. Watching murder shit. Like, it never happens then. It always happens when I'm asleep or not here or fucking drunk or something like that so that just only thing that makes sense to me is there's an explanation for all of it i didn't get hacked i have a thing on my uh i have a thing on my phone that i downloaded back in the day when someone said oh remember when they all thought that orange put something on my phone well i paid high dollar for something it would tell me immediately like it bugs the fuck out of me all the time especially with anything so i definitely am it's that's not it i'm telling you guys i was like this I'm moving, you know, you can see, I will replay it. I move my arm slightly and then I go to go up. Well, it starts to talk and I shoot up and all of a sudden the song starts to play. Well, my arm went down when it startled me. I hit it again. Yeah. On the iPad, it was in my lap. That's the only thing that makes sense to me. I don't believe. I don't know. Why would the mods time you out, Jules? You're not the first person to say that. We all know what I need to do. I just don't like to talk about it. Hey, AR. There's, I, just, I just find it hard to believe. I've lived here almost, what, it'll be four years by myself the entire time. Well, I've had a roommate, what, six months out of that the entire time? And wouldn't it happen more often? Like, okay, the only thing that I can't explain away is my mom and my dad, that their whole thing. Now, if it was my mom, I'd be like, okay, she was high or something like that. But my dad, don't fuck around. My dad, no. Well, you who do not care, damn it. All right. Do a history on the house, I should. And they say, like, animals are really sensitive to that shit. Well, why aren't my animals freaking out? Why isn't Royal, like, barking and all that? Why, why didn't something else happen? Like, my animals alerting me. I have no idea. Actually, I do. I know who was calling. A friend of mine. I won't say their name. And no, it was not tragic. That's why I don't want to say 
Nope. Stay out here, buddy. You're going to try to eat or kill Jack next. You can't be trusted. Come on, buddy. All right, let's go back into the history. It looks like that night it was the Bruno Mars song. Did I play um, Billy Joel after that? Do you guys remember that night? Did I play Billy Joel after that? Because here's what goes first. It was Baby, I Love Your Way, and then it goes to Bruno Mars. And then the next song is Billy Joel, Vienna, then Miley Cyrus, Flowers. But I feel like and then another time that we played that, it was Radiohead Creep right before Bruno Mars. Jules, what the fuck? Why do you care so much? Who are you to me? Like, what the fuck are you doing to me? You don't think we all in this room know the problem? Do you think I don't know the fucking problem? What what are you doing? What do you want? I'm an alcoholic. What what more do you fucking want from me? A link for what? Who the fuck are you? Only Bruno. Don't you see we're fucking about something else and you're trying to get the attention on you and nobody goddamn knows you? I don't want to hear somebody come up here, no offense, a stranger, tell me, oh, Katie, you're an alcoholic. I have enough friends that tell me that. I don't need you, sweetheart. Please, just stay while. Oh, hell no. Get Rita's out of here. That makes more sense. No wonder. No wonder. Rita's, I don't want to deal with you. Leave me alone. Like, I don't understand what the fuck you want. Uh, you, you think I, de I definitely don't want to hear you come up here raving and raving. When you're two, three years after your gastric bypass and you tell me where you're at in life and then you can fucking judge me. Until then, shut up. Actually, until then, get the fuck out. AR, take out Rita's. I don't want to deal with her tonight. I just, I'm not in the mood, Rita's. I'm not in a bad mood, but also I'm not in a mood to deal with that. Was it three nights ago that this happened? Oh, well, PDQ, one of them. Damn it, AR, why are you not a mod? So three nights ago, was that when it happened? Because the song before Bruno Mars was Fleetwood Mac, The Chain. I like somebody outside is fighting. I don't mind my own fucking business. Sounds like it. Like a chicken, a dude, or going at it. We got a, a slight domestic disturbance here. Who's DD? I don't even see a DD comment. Well, that's the thing. Is I'm just saying. If, if it went in the past three nights, the songs before them don't add up because none of them say wake your ass up or anything like that. I'm just, I maybe I hit something else and then hit that real fast. What do you guys want to hear? Billy Joel don't say wake your ass up in New York state of mind. I would know that one. I've heard that song a million times in my life. <laughs> a million. I'm not kidding you, probably close to. I don't know. We listen to so much shit. I'm scrolling up the last couple of days, plus a little shit I watch during the day when I'm doing my um, crosses and skulls.
You can call yourself my bitch. You're my bitch, whatever, baby. We support your mama sometimes. I'm sorry, this killed me. Oh no, I'm saying too much. As it said, pass me in the corner, pass me in the top. Right, past the right position, trying to keep up with you, and I don't think that I could do it. Oh no, I said too much. Look at it, he's a fool. I thought that I heard you that I thought that I heard you be. I think I thought I saw you try. Every whisper, every waking hour, I'm choosing my confession. Trying to keep my Like a ghost lost in the pool. Oh, what? I don't want to hear that. Billy Joe always wins. Sorry. Love Billy Joe. I gotta bust ass and get to the Eagles and fucking so Lexington, Kentucky. It is hard, but still. <laughs> Alright, yeah, original song, right? <laughs> Well, are we going to see any spooks tonight, guys? I ain't got enough cigarettes for spooks. I don't know where my basement went off to. Billy, are you off tomorrow? Remind me a little bit. I need to go charge my crystals. I don't want to fucking do that right now. I'm trying to get buzzed, damn it. And, uh, I thought it was last night. I know there's like a double moon coming because a lot of people had pictures of the moon. <coughs> Is it a full moon tonight or was it last night? Someone look that up, please. Billy says tonight. Mm. So, uh, is it more powerful to charge your crystals and all your little spooky shit under a full moon? Well, guess what? I'm about to charge mine under a double moon. I'm going to put a spell on you. Oh, God, he told her to watch Amber Lynn. Amber Lynn is um, a weight loss channel who hasn't lost but gained weight the past, I don't know. Actually, I heard that she did. I don't I don't keep up with them motherfuckers. But basically, you got this group on fucking YouTube that just does nothing. It's called Girl World. They do nothing but, like, well, and there's some that are just obsessed with fat chicks. And I don't know why. Watching them eat, watching them, like, criticizing their every fucking move. It's actually, it's it kind of sad. It's absolutely sad, but yeah. Amberlyn Reed is one of their cows. Put a camera on what? On the crystals? I could. The problem is, is I need more to record with than just my phone. I need to be able to go live on something else. Like, I need double, triple cam. I need a big brother house. How can I set that up? To every room in my house, there's a fucking camera. 
well, other than my bathrooms, you little perverts, but I would do it in every room of my house. Well, not my bedroom either. And some nights the bedroom cam will be on, other nights it won't. I actually seen a new review channel today that kind of kind of made me laugh a little bit. Yeah, but how would I set it up to go live? That's the thing. Like, I wouldn't even know how to go about doing that. I could do it on my phone, you know? I mean, yeah, I know how to do it. But how do you set up a whole camera system to where, like, there's little boxes everywhere. And the main box is, like, where I'm sitting at. And then if I walk into another room, you can walk. That would be cool as fuck. Tell me it wouldn't. That's it. I'm getting roommates and everything else. We're going to make this like a a real world midlife edition. <laughs> I love Riley. I cannot believe he killed a fucking animal tonight. I'm just looking at him like, you son of a bitch. Dude, you see all kinds of shit here. I'm sure you would. That's it. That's it. Like, I'm going to have to fucking do this at least through the rest of the year because I'm going to do no sauce 2024. Anyone want to join me? I bet not. No, please don't put yourself through hell if you don't have to. I'm going to do it just to see what I can get accomplished in 2024. And if, it, if next year is a great fucking year, then I'm going to understand what the problem is. What's up, Bell? So we got the next few months to rip hell. Off the sauce, 2024. Oh, yeah, I always smoke weed. That's one thing I won't give up. I, I don't give a fuck who tries me or whatever. I mean, but I could use a year off the sauce, see what I accomplished, then reflect and say, hey, has this year been better than the rest of the years? Has this, you know, go from there. No, he didn't take the animal to me. He tried to eat fucking went and found it. And I was like, what the hell? Like, what is in his mouth? I thought it was a chew toy at first. And then I realized that's a fucking rat. And then I was like, that's too big to be a rat. That's a damn chipmunk. And he just flung it around and then started gnawing on it, put its head in his mouth and shit like that. It was absolutely fucking disgusting. How to go inside. How to go inside. Grossed me out, man. Weed is the answer, but I get to a point where, like, weed doesn't do it for me. It's just like, okay, you get stoned, and then, but I'm going to have to make it my thing again. That's fine. Huh. <clears throat> What's your baby tail? Baby boy, I can't believe this fucking thing's still going, man. I'll talk to it and it'll go away. I do not watch Big Brother at all. Never have. I just like the concept of it. It's <coughs> torn <coughs> to man. I had something in my motherfucking eye. I hate when that happens. It's like attached to my eyelashes. It's gotta be. It's driving me nuts. So usually when I wear the wigs, if I don't have a hat on, like it just gets in my face and usually makes me itch or gets in my eye, so. No one's scared of you. Just no one wants to deal with you, dude. You're too much. You want the truth or do you want me to lie? Like, you're just too much. You're a royal pain in the ass. Like, one minute you're okay. The next minute you're fucking nuts. Like, Rita, you've been like this your entire time on YouTube and not a lot of people. I just, yeah, I'm an ally. I just also <laughs> don't want to put up with crazy, man. 
Like, it's not entertaining to me. You're a dick, then you're not. You're a dick, then you're not. And I just, at this point, you're labeled a dick, and I'd rather not. Greatest, I'm not giving you a platform. Go go tell this shit to Telfer. Go sh tell this shit to Randy. Go do this anywhere else but here. Go away. You're just going to come up here and uh, you act like a dick in the chat and then you'll come up acting sweet as pie on panel because you're a fucking pussy and don't talk the same shit as you do when you are face to face. I mean, how many times do we got to do this? You've already been on my stream, what, twice this year? The same shit. The same shit. It is sad. It's very sad. No one's entertaining you anymore for a reason. Get a new stick and maybe people will pay attention. So glad I got mods here. Anybody want to be a mod that can actually be a fucking mod? When we have annoyances like this, this would be one that you'd take out pretty fast. Let me look at the list. All right, now if I got to log in, a lot of people are in fucking trouble, damn it. Of course, I'm going to have to fucking remember the password to this one. Let's see. No, I don't. I really don't, AR. I used to. I used to have really good fucking mods. And this is what scares me about what's to come. I'm going to have to be real choosy because this is going to be a big deal here in about a week. And it's like I need people to either step up or step the fuck down at this point because I'm starting to get pissed off. Like, I got 10 fucking mods that just sit there and do fucking nothing. And if you do something, you know who the fuck you are. Lemur, you're good. PDQ, you can be good. AR, you're good. I just haven't wrenched you yet. Kim's in bed. Always in fucking bed anymore. 073 is nowhere to be found half the time. Indie Girl's here when she can be. Mindy's busy. Where's Danny? Where are my fucking mods? I'm getting pissed off about it. At this point, which, but moving forward, I'm just going to have to fucking do it all myself. And right now, I cannot remember what uh, email is the new one under. I could go in there to my computer and figure it out. My God. I'm getting fucking pissed off. Especially someone like fucking Rita. Ritas, you want to know why I don't want you up here? Winning an argument with you is like winning the Special Olympics. In the end, I'm still a fucking retard. I'm not going to entertain you. You don't scare me. You don't nothing. It's just, I don't have the energy to put into that. That's the truth. I say Janie early. I haven't seen her. Tyler, you will never get a rich. Mm -mm -mm. Rosie, you got a uh, wrench, don't you? Right now, the only wrenches I see in here are PDQ. AR doesn't have one. I think Billy might have one. They're back. Indiana Knights. I can't keep fucking track, man. See Lemur. Does Janie have a wrench? Does Charms have a wrench? Who all has wrench? I can't tell from my side. I know PDQ does. I know. I thought that I modded you today, Rosie. It's getting cold. It's getting cold, which means views are going to be up soon, which means I need you guys doing your best. It's going to get wild till the end of the year. It's going to be a fucking, probably a damn mess. And then, yes. And then we change it all around. I mean, you got to think, I got that fucking surgery. I'm going to be in damn pain. It's going to be probably going to be a miserable cunt for God knows how long until I heal. I can just feel it coming. I can just feel that shit cutting. Hell, I'm going to be on pain pills. I'm going to have to be. He went back to bed. All right. He's got to work. He's forgiven. 
I can just see it now. I end up cussing you all out by the end of the year. Mm. There's certain people that need to go immediately. Redis would be one of them. Can you agree, Tally? That would be one. Like, when she's on a roll, just get rid of her. She'll come back with a different name and act like a totally different person and be cool for a couple of days. And then she goes crazy. Like, it's a, it, this has been going on for years. Redis is just one of those. Hell no. I don't have the energy for that. I preserve my energy for the good shit. Thank you, Dana. It's the one that I had before last is still the same one. I just brushed it. I brushed it today. Mm -mm -mm. So I got this soap and it's called Olay and it's supposed to be like, re I can't remember. I'm going to have to go get it. It's something Olay. It smells really fucking good. Anyways, I put I'm sitting there taking a shower today. Everything's good and dandy and all that. Gentle reminder why I can't have scented fucking soaps. My fucking crotch has been itching all day. And I know I hit that motherfucker with the soap too. I did. I had my rag in my hand and I like, usually I only use uh, my dial soap. And then on my stomach, I use my special soap. But today I was like, you know what? I'm going to use that new uh, soap. It was on clearance. I was like, why not? My skin's been really fucking dry. And, and, like breaking up my spray tan. Like I like the way it makes my skin feel like super soft and like moist. But, oh, my God, damn, dude. I had to go in there with it. The... I can't be using that shit. Same thing with Bath and Body Works stuff. Anything scented fucks me up, man. So, no more of that. I'll give it to my mom. Let her deal with it. I will never do that shit again. It's kind of like the time I put fucking nair on my crotch. Oh, my God, Jesus. Oh, my God. The worst fucking pain in my life. I can only compare it to like. A bob wire wedgie dude. Millions of bob wire. Like not even that. Like what would be like a million needles at once. Straight up in every. Oh god. I will never ever do that again. In fact I haven't used Nair since then. I won't even put it on my fucking legs anymore. That traumatized me for goddamn life. And the smell. The smell of just like burnt skin and hair. It said to leave it on for eight, or what was it, like eight or ten minutes, and I did. But, all right, and it smelled weird. The pain, the motherfucking pain, rinsing it off. I, like, only thing that I can compare it to is, like, a, some kind of torture device with a million fucking needles on it going up your slice all the way to your asshole, dude. It was the worst thing I've ever felt in my life. I was shooting straight up to the fucking ceiling when throwing that. I was like, I'll never do this again. Never. My shit was not right for like a week, dude. Even white and even peeing, anything. I was like, never the motherfucker again. Now with this Olay shit, the same thing. That's why I keep going up and going to the bathroom, dude. It's like fucking inches. My God. And I know it's the damn soap. Like if I use any kind of laundry detergent other than Tide, I get real fucking itchy. I got sensitive skin, man. But I tried again. I tried. I thought, oh, I'll smell fucking beautiful or some shit. No, the fuck I won't. I'll pay for it the rest of the day. And so I'm going to send that shit to my enemy. YTR, that's your Christmas present right there, bitch. I'm going to put that shit, wrap it up, and send it to your ass. I mean, it's not just my crotch. It's just my crotch that I noticed the most because the rest of my skin's itching, like my fucking arms and all that. That's why I put on a sweatshirt, dude. Like, it makes it feel slightly better. But I was sitting there eating noodles today, and I was like, why the hell am I itching like this? It occurred to me a few hours ago, it has to be that new soap. It has to be. Stain be gone. I use spray and wash. No. Mm -mm -mm. And probably also, also what it is, every time I get in the shower, you know, I always do, I always shave. Like, I'll go from... I do one of these. I go swipe, swipe underneath because I got a few whiskers under here, too. But I got like two or three. I got a cluster, like two, three badass whiskers right here. And the same on my other side. So I'm like, this is my routine. I get my little razor and I'm like, swipe, swipe, swipe. Then I do my armpits. Then I do my crotch. And that's what, there's where it felt. And then sometimes I'll do my legs. I don't shave my legs every time. But anyways, 
I shaved my crotch and I was like, oh yeah. And then I got all this smelly soap and I just let that sink right into the pores. I just busted open, especially on my crotch. I mean, I had a rag and I was just rubbing that shit in too. I know what the fuck it came from. I'll never do that again. Again, I'm sending that to YTR for Christmas. Or are they just sitting here? I might go in there and eat the rest of that Subway. It sounds pretty good. But first, another drink. I got a... I really like the steak and cheese. I got that last time. And it was it was delicious, of course. I, I love it. But I don't know. Today, I had a coupon. That's the only reason why I went there. Well, I was at Walmart anyways, and they got um, a Subway right there when you walk out. I was like, man, I got those coupons in my purse. Not only could... And I was hungry as fuck, too. I got cottage cheese and I got a few other things just to hold me over. And I got those nasty ass chips uh, just to hold me over until next week. And uh, I kept smelling that subway. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do it. Think I should, don't get me wrong. I love the American, the club's great, but I should have got either the steak and cheese or I should have just got a cold cut. I don't know what it is. I like, I love a cold cut with the bologna on it and shit. This didn't have anything I would have done without the ham. If I get an American again club because I like the turkey and the bacon, I'm going to ask him for bologna instead of or salami or something else instead of that ham. I don't like ham that much anymore. I like ham and beans. I do like that. I like a real ham. I can't eat that processed fucking ham. Ate a little bit today. I was like, I need it. Hey, sweet pineapple. Who's blocking you? Avocado. Fuck you. I hate an avocado. Th that, there is nothing more disgusting in the world than a mushroom and an avocado. I do like guacamole when it's not loaded down with tomatoes and onions. But no, fuck avocado. I don't give a fuck if it's a superfood or what. I'm not eating it. Put that shit in my salad and see how fast I toss it to the side. I have had it in like, uh, like a soup. I went to Bangkok Kitchen with some dude I was talking to. There. Some dude took me there. And they had like little chunks of avocado and tofu and shit. That was actually pretty good. I did like that. But no, fuck avocado. Unless it's guacamole. And even then, you go to the restaurant or whatever, and they want to load it down with, you know, cheap-ass fillers, like fucking raw-ass onion and fucking tomatoes and shit. Just ruin that. I want plain guacamole. I think I make it best. So I take it. I mash it up. I put a little bit of onion powder in it, a little bit of garlic powder, salt, a little bit of pepper, very little pepper, lemon juice, lime juice. Mash it up again. <sighs> Delicious. And if you don't want it to turn brown, just spray it with ham. I've always done that, and it never makes it turn brown. Sometimes I'll add a little bit of olive oil if I'm feeling frisky, but I don't even do that every time. I just make it easy. Mm -hmm. And what else? Oh, wait, no. I put something else in it. No, is that it? Do I put mayonnaise in it? I can't remember. I haven't made fucking guacamole in years. Oh, and I add cilantro, too. I do like cilantro in it. Mm -hmm. That's like pickles. You will never catch me eating a goddamn uh, bread and butter pickle ever in my life. I do like dill pickles, though. And spicy ones are good. I don't like sweet pickles. I eat a lot of pickles. The one sandwich that I eat, it has to have pickles and must have mayonnaise. And I mean covered from head to toe is a tenderloin. Even like the pieces that go outside the bread, I want it covered in fucking mayonnaise. And then I also want a pickle to eat with every bite. Tenderloin the same way. Actually, with tenderloins, I'll even have ketchup on it. But it, to me, that is just like fucking. If you put cheese or ketchup on a real tenderloin, that's like sacrilege. It's, it's terrible. You're, you're you're no good to me. I don't like ranch either. I don't like ranch either very much. I'd rather have blue cheese. Like, listen to me. If I'm sitting there eating wings with you and you fucking dip your... Okay, first of all, if you ask me to go out for wings, they better be bone-in wings. Other than that, then ask me to go out for chicken nuggets or whatever, you know? Just like, if I'm sitting there eating wings and I gotta, like, fucking pop it in my mouth and throw a bone to the side and be gross with it, so do you. And then, rule number two, if you don't have your motherfucking wings with blue cheese, I cannot be your friend. I, or I can be your friend, but I'm, not, I'm gonna talk shit to you. Wings go with blue cheese. That's it. Like, you know... Buffalo wings, like buffalo, fucking, what do you mean? That's it. No, you fucking taint my wing with a ranch sauce. I'm pissed. I don't like ranch. I don't like it. 
like chicken bacon ranch and shit like that. I just think it's nasty. It's fun. And Miracle Whip is another one. Miracle Whip and Ranch can both kiss my ass. I don't like it. No. And you know what I really like? If, you, if I'm at a wing place and they make in-house uh, blue cheese, I'll, I'll definitely like them then. Definitely. You love Miracle Whip? No, Ken. No. My mom, my real mom, loved Miracle Whip. And that tangy, oh, it's fucking horrible. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Again, if you don't eat your fucking wings, who in here is a blue cheese person? When you have, when you have hot wings, what are you dipping them into? One, blue cheese. Two, ranch. I need to know. I need to know who my people are. Yes, Gracie. Yes, Chubby Cherub. Charms. Janny. Deja Vu. Re see, okay. My people have arrived. Oh, yeah. Like, um, fresh blue cheese. Like, if you go to Keystone. I know you're in uh, Indy. 56 in Keystone. The Keystone Grill. Oh, they make the best in-house blue cheese. Second best. It's mainstream, so don't beat me up. I love uh, Cheesecake Factory's blue cheese. They do it right. They do it damn right. Oh, my God. You get the buffalo blast and dip them in their homemade blue cheese. That's a meal. Oh, my God. It's making me hungry. Let's not talk about this shit. And you know what? My ulcers are healed. I might have I might have hot wings. I have not had hot wings in over a year. I don't have any ulcers anymore. And that's what fucked me up before. And I used to eat hot wings. All That's my favorite food. This weekend, we're going to get hot wings. Decided. At some point this weekend, we're going to do a mukbang with hot wings and blue cheese. Flats or drums, it don't matter. I eat them both. A lot of people like flats. They're all right. I, I actually like the drums. I like them equal. No, I don't want to do I know. What was I talking about? Wings? See, I got wings on the mind. Maybe. Today I went and did that ramen noodle test. You like boneless? Those are chicken nuggets with sauce on them. I'll eat them too. I do, but they're in. Like, I just think that bone in wings, I think that bone in fried chicken tastes better. I like the thighs. I like the legs. I like it all. I like bone in. With the flat, this is how I do it. I put that fucker in my mouth and I go like this. I suck all the meat off. Throw it to the side. Ooh, the sampler. Kim, not impressed. I do not like their new flavors that are coming out. Everybody, Campbell's Soup is going to be uh, coming out with a chicken stir fry and a chicken summer. And, uh, dude, it was terrible. It was terrible. And they're going to call it teriyaki. Well, it's supposedly teriyaki. That shit tastes like chicken, period. And I gave an honest review. The only thing that I liked was the lo mein noodles. And that's what I buy all the time. So they switched a bunch of them in. Like, which ones do you like the best? Well, the ones that I always buy, you know, the ones from like Dollar Tree or whatever. It's got the black lid on it. And it says lo mein, teriyaki lo mein. And they're in a flat, not in the cup. Mm. So they served me that. And I gave that the highest review. And I was like, would buy and all this shit. And then they showed us the brands at the end. And I was like, son of a bitch. Campbell's, every one of their shit I did not like. I gave a shitty review. Now, this off-brand that you can get at Dollar Tree, you can get it cheaper at Walmart or even Kroger, for that matter. It's like 99 cents or some shit. But you pay the extra quarter at Dollar Tree now. Absolutely way better than the rest of them, hands down. And the aftertaste. We had to cleanse our little palates and shit like that. But the aftertaste is what did me on the chicken one. The um, stir fries and all that. I don't like that taste. It's too salty. It'll go away. Um, tomorrow when I take a shower and all that, it'll go away. Well, hopefully. Well, I hit it with the fucking dial soap and I, it's definitely a lot better. 
But I just know I cannot do scent, scented, any kind of like, even lotion will fuck me up sometimes. I just gotta have plain. Dial soap. And then I have special soap for my stomach, but that's doesn't have any scent to it anyways. I think I actually have a package of the noodles that I like the most. Hold on. I'll go get it for you when I, ref yeah, I'll refresh my drink and show you guys. The ones that overall, what I, and I get them all the time. Right. You're right. That is the brand. You're right, Kenny. This is the br hi baby, hi baby. Mm -mm. Even though you're a killer, psycho killer. I fucking love this. This is my favorite brand of noodles. Um, this was the only one that actually tasted like teriyaki. They were trying to say that the other ones were really. It, they were trying to fuck us up and say, oh, which one? Because they wanted to see if we were being honest taste testers. I nailed the first one. I was like, this is chicken. There is no teriyaki. And they were like, what about the sweetness? I was like, what sweetness? That's chicken. How's the aftertaste? Like chicken. And it was. It was Campbell's Soup uh, chicken um, ramen noodles. Chicken flavored ramen. The second taste test that I got were these. And they were like, how's the teriyaki? I was like, on point. And they were like, how's the noodles? I was like, definitely good. The sauce, perfect. The vegetables could be more. Um, overall, extremely happy and would buy. The next one was Campbell's... Uh, Chicken stir fry is same as number one. Same as number one, like that taste. Here's the thing is, okay, so I will. Are you an in indie? If you're in Indianapolis or in, well, you are. You're an in indie. You're close enough. Yeah. It's indie in all the surrounding counties. I, uh, hit me up, send me a message, and I'll give you the link to it all you do is sign up when you first sign up they just basically ask you what's your name what you do how much do you make how old are you that kind of thing are you allergic to any kind of foods are you allergic to basically what your allergies are and all that once you're in their system they get all these companies that come and want them to do like taste test or brand testing shit like that so then if you like fit in what these companies are looking for they'll shoot you an email and then you do this survey and you answer the questions well, if you answer the questions the way you want to, because some there's a lot of times I don't get picked, and then there's sometimes that I do. <clears throat> if you fit into the category that they want you to, or whatever they're looking for, then yeah. And like today, it was sixty five bucks. I mean, sixty five bucks doing that. I remember, and it's always on a gift card. It's always on a gift card, except for one time. I went in there, and it literally took me five minutes. And you walked in, and they said, and you went in individually. I had gotten there, and they were like, "Okay, go ahead." Walked into the room. And the lady says, out of all of these uh, windshield wipers that are across this wall, which one would you buy just from the packaging? And then I went in there and I just picked which one. I didn't read anything. I just picked which one. Walked out of there 50 fucking dollars. I was like, right on, dude. But like, I've been picked for quite a few. Like, I'm part of the Applebee's taste testing one. Like, I'm already committed in there because they like my age group and my income level and all that because, you know, I'm poor. I'm poor people go to Applebee's. So they always want my opinions uh, with that shit. But a lot of like my older friends that I've gotten, they do like like debt. She always gets the ones for like home improvements and shit like that. And the hell, they pay high dollar, like 100, 150 bucks for like 30 minutes of your time. It's unbelievable. So I always get taste tests for some reason. I had to do a burrito test. At the, remember I, when I was doing the burrito one at the beginning? I, got, I fucking got tired of it. I didn't get paid for it because I fucking bailed out of it. It just got, I couldn't eat burritos for eight days straight. Yeah. Um, and it's random. Like, I haven't done one in probably two, three months. The last one that I went to, Doug dropped me off. And I remember it was raining. What was it? Oh, Applebee's is coming out with a new... It's like the bourbon style chicken or whatever. They have this whole new line. It's not, it reminded me of bourbon chicken. Like you got, you remember it like um, the malls when you go into the food courts and it always had like Asian chow or whatever the fuck it's called. Different place. And then you have that real good bourbon. And that's about the only place you could get it good at. 
everything reminded me of that. That was the last taste test I did. That was for Applebee's. So they're going to come out with that. Usually if we taste test it, it comes out within about a year later. Like we taste it, tested the Cheeto and Dorito boneless wings. To me, they were too salty. I remember giving that a taste review. What else? I've done quite a few now over the years. Like, and you're not going to get picked every time. You might, they might shoot you an email and say, hey, we've got this, this, and this. I mean, they'll tell you when they do. I mean, sometimes you get picked, sometimes you don't. It's just whatever the consider the people are looking for. Like, what diversity, whatever. Like, when I walked in there today, I saw there were young people, definitely young people. Like, I'm talking about, like, 18, 20, like, every age group. There was a couple, I mean, and everybody, black, white, Mexican, everybody. Uh, young, old, middle-aged and shit. And I knew that they were doing it by ages because I got put, they were like, everyone who's this number through this number, come on. And then you see all the young kids like file up. And they were like, this number through this number. So me and all the other middle-aged fuckers there, my age group is 35 to 45. And then you have 45 to 55 and 55 to 65. And I don't know, it probably goes beyond there. And they all, at the end, they just lump you together because one guy looked like he was 90 fucking years old. And he did not, I could tell he did not like any of the noodles. He was not having that shit. I was like, me either, dude. Me either. He just, you could just tell he was not having it. But anyways, I'm always I'm towards the end of the group every time. So I'm in that age group. Yeah. But no, I don't think I I don't want to do a noodle one anymore. I don't like I didn't like that very much. And then if you do, and sweet pineapple, and then some companies will lock you into their, like, I'm locked into Applebee's. So anytime they do a taste test or whatever, because in the more you give, like, the more descriptions you give when they ask you questions and shit, they're going to pick you more often. And then you could get locked down into, like, one company's taste testing review. So I'm in the only, yeah. I'm in 35 to 45, and then you only got two age groups, you know, you know, like me, a couple before then. It's, like, 18 to, like, 25, 25 to 35, 35 to 45. So I'm right in the middle. Yeah, I could tell that the older man, he would not like it, any of the noodles. You could just, he would like it, and he'd be like, ugh. He like made noises. You're not supposed to make noises, nothing. You're supposed to be in your cubicle, nothing. But I, he kept making noises, and he was beside me, so. And then they'll come by with a thing of little crackers, and they're like, cleanse your palate. And you've got to eat the crackers in front of the person. They, they take it very seriously. You're not allowed to have your cell phone out or nothing. You're in like a little cubicle, and like it's like, you could very easily look over. Everyone has to be facing forward. And then once you get done, they'll hand you crackers or whatever. And they do this for Applebee's too. And you got to eat the cracker and then take a couple drinks of the drink. You can get away with one drink. I always do. I always eat the cracker and then take a drink. Because I'm like, look, I've had uh, bariatric surgery. I got to be careful with this shit. And then you get your next. It's really cool. And you can make a little extra money here and there. They're not going to pick you every time. I'd say you'd probably get picked like four or five times out of the year. And you never know how much money you're going to make. Ever. Yeah, you should. I got two of them. I go through two of them. Actually, Miss Mary. You remember my friend Miss Mary? She got me onto this shit. She does them all the time. I was like, hell, I want to make some money doing it too. So I've been doing it for years. Hell, probably at least eight years now. Yeah. And it doesn't take that much time. Hell, like today we got paid to eat lunch. That's how I'm looking at it. And it's right there off of uh, off of 465 and 71st Street and then the other facilities at 86th Street. More than likely, you'll go to the 86th Street one most often. Look, out of all the taste tests today, you have to take at least three bites and then give your answers and all that. The first one, I was like, do I have to take the third bite? I don't like this. And they're like, take the third bite. I took the third bite, and then I went in on my answers. The second one, I didn't want to give up my sample. I ate the, almost the entire sample, but it was this. It was this. This was the brand and everything. And this is the best teriyaki flavored brand uh, out of all the taste tests we did. I should have known. 
I love it. But I didn't want to give up my sample at all. And they were like, okay, give it, you know, so I did. And then the other ones, I probably, I took my three bites out of it and that was it. And like, bare, like little bites too, because they were fucking nasty, man. Just like when uh, Applebee's changed their barbecue sauce to, they wanted to do spicy, all this. They had a Carolina one, the honey barbecue and the Chipotle one, which they're in cahoots with uh, Sweet Baby Ray's. So their spicy barbecue at Applebee's is Sweet Baby Ray's Chipotle. And their honey barbecue is their own, like, I don't know, some other brand, but yeah. But again, coming uh, here soon, they're going to roll out that bourbon shit. And the bourbon chicken is very good. The bourbon style wings, I did not like. For some reason, it just had a different taste. Way too salty. I'm trying to think of what other ones I've done. I've done a uh, candle sniff test before. And with that one, I that one actually paid a hundred bucks. So you went in there and you had four. It was for Bath and Body Works. So it, we don't, you don't ever find out until after you're done what company you're smelling for or whatever you're doing it for. Um, but they, you sniff one and then they bring coffee beans over and you got to like sit there and sniff that. And you and then you just get, would you buy this? What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? That kind of shit. Here's the packaging. Would you buy it? And I get that kind of thing. It was a hundred fucking dollars for that. I sniffed four candles and some coffee beans. Hell. What do you mean? Hell yes, Rolf. I wish I had that right now. I love a fried pork chop. Even more so, I love beans. Well, for some, I did a perfume one years ago. I'm, I mean, it was one of the first ones I ever did, and they did the same thing. Like, they'd make you sniff the thing, and then you'd smell coffee beans, and then whatever. I think, for some reason, coffee beans might neutralize your nose or whatever. I don't do any. And then if you really want a real good gig, Sweet Pineapple, because I know you're an indie, I'll give you the link to the Eli Lilly one. That one pays, but dude, it's medical. I ain't going to be no guinea pig for fucking pharmaceuticals. I draw the line there. Like taste testing, product testing, that kind of thing to get paid for. It. Yeah, okay, I'm down. But yeah, I mean, they'll pay you. And when I say they pay you, like I'm talking about a couple hundred bucks and shit. Sometimes even a thousand dollars, but you don't know what they're fucking giving you. There's no way. Like, I would fill out their surveys and they'd be like, we want you to be part of our test study for six weeks and try this medicine. And here's all the side effects that could happen and all this. And I'm like, at first I was totally down, right? And I, would, I never got picked for them. But then once I had gastric bypass and all that, my doctors are like, absolutely no medical research studies at all. <laughs> there will be none of that. No, I can't. And my doctor said, well, it wasn't even my choice. They were just like, you can't take anything and no medical studies. That was one of the things that they did say. Because a lot of people do this kind of shit around here just to whatever. But no. How dare you? I see you. Anal leakage, all that shit. Yeah, you'd have these side effects that were out of the fucking world. And it's like, hey, we'll pay you 500 bucks to do this for eight weeks. Eight, well, usually it's like 12 weeks, actually. And But you could have these side effects. I think not. No. And so now I've heard, I've heard that they've gone up, like it's like a thousand dollars or whatever and shit, but either, either way, I'm not, hell no. DZ worked at Eli Lilly's test lab for a while. It was Harlan, or why do I always want to say Harlan? It was something else. May have been Harlan. But anyways, um, she had to take care of the rats that they did test studies on. Right. So she would go in there. Oh, what a horrible job, man. And she, I don't know how she survived as long as she did. I mean, they paid, they paid decent. But when you walked in there, you couldn't have makeup or jewelry on. And you had to take a shower walking into the facility. And once you were in there, they provided lunch and everything. And you weren't allowed to leave until you left the building. And then you had to take a shower going out too. And like people would come up with like bullshit, especially smokers. Like, oh, I'm a diabetic and I got to go take my shot out in the car. Well, if you had to do that, you had to take a shower leaving and then a shower coming back in. So you could take four showers in one shift. Um, but they provided lunch and everything. And it wasn't good lunches. It was like sandwiches and ravioli and the same old shit all the time. She worked there about a year. I don't know how the fuck she did that. And what she did is she had to clean the cages and take and like wash the rats or do whatever the fuck they wanted. She was like... Sometimes they had to put little tattoos on the rat, like a number. She's a rat tattooey. 
<laughs> she was. I couldn't do it. Hell no. She did work there about a year. It was decent money. So she kept doing it. Ended up getting other people to join. I was working at Red Lobster bartending and fucking doing the management and training when she was doing all that. And she was like, you should come and work. I was like, I ain't giving up my fucking, my fucking cush job over here. Fucking, I don't know. Hell no for some rats. To come hang out with you and the rats? No, thank you. Hell no. And taking showers, can't wear makeup, none of that. No jewelry, no makeup, that contamination. And it was ran by Eli Lilly. And they would like shoot these rats up with different medicines and seeing how they reacted and all that. And like sometimes the rats would be like fucking going nuts and she'd have to get in there and grab the fucker up and like wash his ass. And hell no. She would get close to the rats too. She had favorites. I was like, I can't believe you. I cannot believe you right now. You, you got friends that are rats. Mm -mm. Never talk about bread around roaches or cheese about <laughs> around rats. Hell no. I don't give a fuck if they paid a hundred dollars an hour. I'm not doing that. I don't care. I would not. I would not do that shit. Mm -mm. But she ended up having her like her favorite rats, and then they ended up getting like a, some kind of something, and then they die, and she like have heartbreak over a fucking rat. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? I'm dead serious. Like she wanted to bring one home with her one time. And I was like, I can't, I literally can't believe you right now. And Jerry worked there. A couple of them did. And she got a couple of people to join in on that shit. And I, I never went for it. I was like, I don't give a fuck. Listen, I'm in management and training at fucking Red Lobster at this point. I ain't making money. Like she maybe made, we probably equaled out to the same amount of money, to be honest with you. But there was no way in fucking hell. And I even had to drive like 45 minutes to work at that point. And this place was literally down the street from me. Detroit wouldn't even do it. Detroit wouldn't even go there. She's like, uh-uh, no. I'll work at fucking Casey's. She worked at the gas station. Detroit's always worked at gas stations. That's her thing. She loves to. But hell, she's like, uh-uh, I'll stay at Casey's for my fucking 12 bucks an hour. I'm not doing it. I was like, I don't blame you. And look, they couldn't leave the facility, right? Dee would say, come up with some excuse so she could go smoke a cigarette sometimes. And she was really, like in the beginning, she really wanted one. She got used to it. But like they would even provide you lunch. I think it's called Harlan Industries or whatever. It's a, revol it's a revolving door. It's one of those places you can always get a job at because they're always hiring and always people are always quitting. But anyway, they provide you lunch. But it's not like a good lunch. She said there was always like sandwiches that were like gas station sandwiches in there. And then you had your... Uh, raviolis and your ramen noodles and stuff like that you were not allowed to leave no makeup nothing hell no and you had your like your specific rats you were taking care of everybody was oh i'll have that roth because i fucking love her you do too much i'm good you're fine you do roth i'll love you no matter what Hashtag raw. Mm -mm. One of my favorites. Loyalty is royalty. Yeah, you're not allowed to have your phone either. That was the other thing. I forgot all the fuck about that. That was true. You're not allowed to have uh, phones, be anything. Just no. I forgot about that. I was I could never get a hold of her during the day. What did Melinda say? Missed it. What, Melinda? What the fuck? What'd you do? They shot your animals up with men. Did you uh, get like a toxicology report and fucking go after them? I'd be in fucking jail. You want to see me lose my fucking mind? I would literally, I'd be like, it's worth it to me. I'm going to jail right now. There'd be no fucking way.
Oh, a Karen? I'm turning into a Jeffrey fucking Dahmer if you fucking hurt my... Are you kidding me? I'm turning into Columbine. Are you kidding me? There'd be no fucking way. That, I swear that would make me snap. That would be it. That would get me in prison for the rest of my life. There you go, people. They got arrested and had to move. I'd take the charge or no, honestly, what I would do is I would go to my friends who were, no, I know exactly what I do. <clears throat> I go to the bikers and be like, you know, this motherfucker did this to me and let's see if you come out of that or even anybody at that point. And that didn't do it. And damn it, I'm going to take the motherfucking charge. Oh my God, Melinda. You know what you do then? You go in there. Oh, I know what I do. Go in there. Either fucking sleeping. Then hold a gun to one. Of, never mind. I'm going to get <laughs> We're going to get this channel down and make, watch them while you inject the other one and inject the rest of your fucking family. And then I'm going to make you inject yourself. That's what I would do. If you couldn't get it handled the other way. And I'm dead serious. Like, fuck with my dog or my animals. That'll be it for me. There's a lot of things that people have done me that have not, like, I should have flipped out, but that would fucking, that would straight send me to prison. I promise you that. I know it would. In some way, somehow, I'd be connected in. There would be no way they'd get away with that. Mm. Well, today, the FBI, Indiana State Police, and IMPD did a huge raid. Um, many people are in jail. Tons of dogs are in custody. They have the SWAT team out there. They hit 20 different locations at once. I didn't realize we had that much power in Indiana. Well, the FBI came in and helped too. Um, they busted 20 different locations for dog fighting and drug trafficking. 15 people are arrested right now. Lots of dogs are in custody. It's a big deal. This just happened this morning. Back when I lived with Meredith, back in my, I was like 19 years old. We lived in the, we lived in the, we, I grew up in the hood. So it was nothing to, this is when it started really, really getting bad on the east side. We lived over there off of uh, 21st and Emerson, right? Forest Park, uh, Forest Manor. Actually, to be specific, we lived on Euclid between Forest Manor, right there on, between Colorado and all that. It, anyways, if you're not from India, you don't know what the fuck that means, but that is the fucking hood. But that's where we grew up. So it was nothing new to us. I remember one morning we woke up. Well, we got, fucking woken up because the SWAT team was going in to the people across from us. And I mean, it lit up our house and everything. My sister, me and Meredith woke up. Courtney was a little kid then, like real young. And all we seen were like bright lights. So the whole, the whole fucking hood was lit up and it was the SWAT team. And what had happened is it was a, a guy and his sister. They were about my age, like 1920. They, their grandparents lived the catty corner from us. Well, apparently they had killed their mom. And then went over to their grandparents' house, killed their grandparents, and were trying to hide their mom and their grandparents. And this is what's so fucked up. So where we lived, we lived right on the corner, right? So we had our own driveway. But there was this little U-Haul truck that just sat there right at the four-way stop. And I said something to Meredith like two days before. I was like, that U-Haul is parked way too close to the stop. I'm surprised they haven't towed that shit or IMPD hadn't put it in. She, you know, my sister's like, uh, whatever. Well, what ended up happening, true fucking story, 100%. Oh, my God. So what ended up happening is that U-Haul, that is what they, like, got cement and shit in. Well, at night, we kept hearing, like, fucking machines and shit. Again, we're in the hood. No one thought about it. That morning when everything, and it came to the news and stuff, and we had, like, Rafael Sanchez in our front yard asking him the neighbors of everything. I, was, I actually did a little interview. Of course I did. I was like, listen, they've lived here as long as we did, maybe even longer. Um, we seen a U-Haul parked out by the stop sign. We did hear the chain. Well, we heard... They were breaking up cement, but me and Meredith be smoking a bowl outside at night. And I'd be like, the fuck is that sound? Like the day before, and she'd be like, who knows? We had a dude named Bug who lived across from us. He's a crackhead. And oh, that's a whole other story. He stole our lawnmower three times and then tried to sell it back to us. And that is, again, I can't make this shit up if I wanted to. We lived in. <laughs> so what ended up happening, you can look it up. It was about 15, 17 years ago now. 
it was a dude about my age. So he's like 20, whatever. And his sister, they both had disabilities. They killed their mom, brought their mom over in the U-Haul, got a bunch of cement and shit from Lowe's, went over to their grandparents' house. Um, what they did is they ended up killing their grandparents too. They tried to, they chiseled up the ground at the fucking floor in the attic or, or in the basement or whatever the fuck they did. Put the bodies in there and tried to lay new cement and then cut the fuck out. They got pulled over on their way. They were headed to Vegas and they got like pulled over on 65, like an hour outside of Indy. They didn't get far. And um, they were just acting real weird. And the cop was like, something's not right here. And they traced back. Da, 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 da. Next thing you know, the SWAT team's at our house like a day later. Not at our house, but across the street. Waking us up at like five o'clock in the morning. Had that whole fucker. And then next thing you know, we had a crime tape all around. All that shit went down while me and Meredith were saying, hey, ask Meredith's side of the story. She took it so, like, nonchalant. But I did. I brought it up. I was like, everyone, I was like, that U-Haul is going to get pulled over. Not that I thought anyone was getting killed. My mother fuck. If I would have thought that, I'd have been like, I'm going to turn them in. Is there a reward? I just knew something weird was happening because that U-Haul was not moving for days. And then at night, we'd be outside smoking a bowl about, like, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, having our cocktails and shit. And it was just like, I was like, what the fuck is that sound this late? That happened for a couple of days. And then the next morning, uh, and they ended up doing like incest shit and all that. Yes, look it up. Look it up. Someone Google that shit. It was Indianapolis. It happened on Euclid Avenue, or we lived on Euclid between Colorado. I cannot remember the fuckers' names. <clears throat> and they ended up like having an incestuous relationship. Like the, it was a son and the daughter. They killed the mom. And then went over to the grandparents' house, fucking stole all their money too, and we're trying to take off to Vegas after they buried them. So, someone looked that up. I can't remember the names, but true story. We lived at uh, I want to say it's 1901 Euclid Avenue. In between 21st and 16th off Emerson. Yes! That's it. Kenneth and Carrie Allen. That is exactly it. That name just clicked about. That has to be it because it makes sense. Yes, that had to be it. They killed their mom and their grandparents. We lived on Euclid. Whew. That was wild. It's been almost 20 years, but I want to say we lived at 1901 North Euclid. And they lived. They actually lived. So here's how it is. We have a four-way stop right there. They live kind of catty corner from us. Not the house is right in front of us, but the house like kind of behind us, but like right on the edge. So if you were at our house, which we're on the end of the corner, you got another one on the end of the corner and then another one. We have one house in between us. But if that told you how many fucking police were there, that our house got lit up at five o'clock in the fucking morning and you could just hear them screaming over the intercom. Nobody was there. They went in. Next thing you know, we have crime tape all around. Oh, the crackhead across the street. So, oh, yes, 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 yes. I do remember that. Look, guys. I half ass remember it. We lived off 16th Street. I was living with um, Stephen at the time. And we had a bunch of crackheads that lived across the street. And they're always pilfering something, man. Can't remember how it happened. I think Stephen was on the lawnmower and came inside or something, but they like tried to steal the lawnmower right in front of like broad daylight. I can't really remember. I half ass remember that though. That did happen. So much crazy shit has happened. I can't even keep up with it anymore. I really can't. But yeah, that did happen. I half ass remember something. Listen, when I lived with Steven, there was a bunch of crackheads that lived across the street that would like, they had a house, right? And then they had an outhouse and the daughter lived in the outhouse. And I mean, there was a toilet in there and she slept like curled up on the wall because she couldn't live inside the house because <clears throat> her grandma or whoever that was her mom wouldn't let her. <clears throat> she get real fucked up and have people over in the driveway and stuff. And one time, uh, something happened with the lawnmower. I think Steven was out there like fucking mowing the lawn or something. Came inside and she just jumped on it and was like cutting out with it or something. I can't remember. I can't remember exactly. That was back. In, I was probably fucking half drunk, but I do remember something like that happening. 
Then you come inside and get a drink, and then all of a sudden we look out there and the crackhead's on the fucking lawnmower trying to take it across the street. Like a big heist or something. Then I'm almost positive what happened is Stephen came inside, was grabbing a beer, and we were sitting there talking. The camera was live, and all of a sudden we hear the lawnmower fire up. We're looking out the fucking window, and the fucking crackhead's on the lawnmower. That's all I remember. That's all I remember of it. He had to chase her down the road. I can't remember. I know I was half lit, but I do remember the lawnmower firing up. I remember it. Stephen, I came inside to get a fucking beer. And yeah, after that, I don't remember. I do remember seeing the fucking bitch on the lawnmower and taking off with it, but. What happened? I know we, we got the lawnmower back, but what? Did Steven chase her down the road? <laughs> Probably. You can't make this shit up. You cannot make this shit up. See, I don't remember that part. I do remember seeing her. I remember looking at that sliding glass and seeing her on there. Like, I have a block memory of that. She was gone. Like, she was taking off. She was going somewhere. She was in the yard, but she was driving away. Hmm. Yeah, I remember being live because we were inside talking. We were, like, cooking dinner or something. And Stephen was outside mowing the grass. And I remember... Him coming inside, and we were sitting there at that island drinking. I made fajitas that night. Okay, it's all coming back to me. I was making fajitas. They were pretty much ready, but I was talking to the people. And Stephen came in, grabbed a beer, and he was sitting there. We were talking, and all of a sudden, we hear the lawnmower fire up. And I remember going to the glass door and seeing her on there, and I don't remember what happened after that. I made fajitas, though. God, that just feels like so long ago. Probably did, BDQ. I probably did. You guys remember the fucking outhouse that was beside it? Like, it was an old school outhouse. and She slept in there. That's what always killed me. Like, how in the fuck are you? You can't even extend your legs or anything and you're sleeping next to a toilet? All because it was her grandmother, but like her mom would not let her sleep inside the house because she was a thief. She's a fucking crackhead. You yelled at him. He took off and chased her down the road. Yeah. Steven was a big guy, though. He was really, really tall. So I bet he probably ran up next to her and kicked her off. How did he get her to stop? Yeah, she always stole it. That's why she had to live out in the outhouse. And that was a like a legit outhouse. <laughs> that was a legit outhouse. And uh yeah, you see her like walking in and out of there all the time. That's why she wasn't allowed in that's why she wasn't allowed in the house, though. It's because she always stole, because she was a fucking crackhead. But she told him it was hers at first. This is my lawnmower. Oh, my God. Remember the time? Red Bull? He's on Red Bull again. I hated that shit. First of all, okay, now, you know, enough time has passed. I hated when he was on heroin. I hated that shit, man. Like, he was just... And most of the time, he was. But what I hated extremely is when he'd fucking do meth and then he'd be bouncing off the fucking wall. And like that night, we were like, oh, he's on Red Bull again. I hated those. I I could not stand him on that. He couldn't sit still. He was one. He drove me fucking nuts. Most of the time he's on heroin. Um, but that's nothing I advertise at the time because, you know, that's why he always came home and would disappear for an hour and shit like that. And I get mad, mad as fuck. I'm an alcoholic though. I can't, I don't like, he was an alcoholic addict that the combination that'll kill you fast, man. And I know that I'm not, I'm an alcoholic. I own it. But goddamn, I can't do, I can't do them. Kind of, 
I have no desire either. I just don't like drugs. Never have. The Oxycontin, when I went to rehab that, I don't know if maybe Pierre Mon or just the whole experience fucking terrified me. I never want to go back down that road again. Like, I'll smoke weed and I'll dabble in cocaine. Not anymore. Not in the past year or anything, because now it's getting cut with fentanyl and all that shit. But back in the day, yeah, I'd dabble in a little cocaine. But no, I can't fuck with heroin, meth, any of that. And it just drove me crazy. I could end up tolerating him on heroin, but when he'd get on meth, God, he drove me fucking nuts. He couldn't sit still. It drive me He'd sit there and just hammer back fucking Budweiser after Budweiser. And, like, there was no end to it either. He could drink a case of Budweiser and then he'd go on to the shots and shit. That's what I knew. Well, the camera is off now. So. I mean, and it was right there readily available. Like, hey, do you want to shoot up and it was always to shoot up and shit and i was just like first of all if i'm gonna go into something i'm not gonna go in that hardcore but also i have no desire because my life was fucking ruined like i lost half well like you know 16 to 18 and a half so but i just couldn't do it and i didn't like watching them do it either and i surely was not gonna throw that on camera or have any of you near that shit so i would sit there and make dinner and what it disappeared for whatever, and I just didn't make a big fuck about it. The only time I'd make a big fuck about it, if it was like over an hour or so, because then I get worried. Is he still alive? You know? And he shot up between his toes. Because he didn't want track marks on his arms or anything like that, but his feet looked like fucking hell. Like, terrible. That's why I always wore socks and shit like that, even in the summertime. <laughs> oh my god. His feet were terrible. The rest of them were beautiful, but oh my God. You know, I'm not judging him. He did what he had to do and ended up killing him though, didn't it? What had happened is, is he had gotten some heroin that was cut with fentanyl. And, uh, So he had gotten it and whatever, and, you know, his sister was gone and they realized he was being too quiet and went upstairs and he was, he had done, he, there was no saying he was gone, gone from, now I've heard many different stories, but I actually got the real story finally and it made more sense to me. He basically, he just OD'd, man. He had gotten a bad batch and it was cut and fitting all, and you got to understand, he was 57 years old. He had been doing this a long fucking time. So... I'm telling you, he did not see that coming or whatever. He wouldn't have done it. He may have been a full-blown heroin addict, but he was smart. He was smart. He would not have done that if he knew something was up with it. Yeah. Well, he didn't ever want to have track marks yet because he worked with customers and all that. So, yeah. I don't know what else to say. He's a great person and So whatever, I mean, I, you know, if, if he was still alive today, I bet I'd still, I'd be back with him. Oh, yeah. I really would. And I don't care that he is a heroin addict. I would have looked past it all because whatever. Um, And that was the main reason that I didn't want him to move in here with me. First of all, every time he'd get fucked up on that shit, we'd end up fighting and stuff. Because this is what happened. I would get drunk. And then I'd bring up, you're a fucking heroin addict and all this shit. And I'd like end up going crazy and just like whatever and you know him he was already fucked up on heroin but and it would have a few beers and we would just get to fighting and shit because I, I don't know it just bothered me to my fucking core that he could not leave that shit alone and then my problem is i'm an alcoholic and i'm good until i'm not good and then when i'm not good i'm gonna bring up everything that fucking upsets me about you and then when you get a heroin addict alcoholic mixed with an alcoholic that's just trouble so We'd hurt each other's feelings and all that. And then when I wouldn't let him move in here at all, because to be honest with you, um, he made good money, but he would spend so much fucking money on that heroin, like a thousand, like he would get paid, I don't know, like 1200 bucks a week, right? He was constantly in debt, constantly like, oh, I owe 800. I, and he did. He genuinely did. I was like, prove it. Because at this point, so now 
I feel like I'm paying more of the bills and all this. You're getting high and drunk. I'm only getting drunk, but yet I'm fucking paying everything. Where is your money going to? Where is your money going to? And then when I figured out how much he was really doing, there was no way I was going to let him move in here with me. No, I don't care how much I loved him, whatever. And I couldn't say this online then or whatever. There was no way. He would have moved in here. At that time, I was doing okay. Like, I could take care of myself. I can't take care of two people. But he would have wanted me to take care of probably both of us. Why he spent all his money on this shit. And it just got worse and worse. It never got better. It just got worse. So, no. So, you know, he tried to move in here. And then the whole Leslie thing happened. He was still, like... And I just, I just flat out told him, I was like, no, unless you quit that shit, there's no way. Because I have seen you since I've been with you just get worse, man. He's like, but I go to work. I don't care if you go to work every day. And like, you're in debt every, because of the amount you do. There's no way. So then he got poor, he moved in with his sister. And then that was not a good situation. At all. At all. I knew it wasn't going to be a good situation. It wasn't, and, he, and he's dead. So, there's a story right there. So, yeah, I survived that. Why in the fuck do I drink? Why the fuck do I drink? And, like, can, I mean... I let my liver handle what my heart can, honestly, because this fucking sucks. And I'm sure a lot of us have been through it. Like when you lose someone to this fucking shit, it just, it's just a horrible thing to watch. Same with me. And I know people see the same thing with me and the alcohol. I can't, I can't watch another person die of heroin though. Or be around it or anything. Because I'm an addict myself. And even though I love Steven with every bit of my heart, I did. Maybe I loved Doug more. I don't know. Maybe I loved him equal. I don't know. No, I definitely, I was, I was smitten by, yeah, I love Steve. Yeah. Okay, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about right now. I love him more. But no matter what you told him, he would not change, so. Either way, he's a sexy beast to me and always will be. And I don't care who judges me or, you know, or even whatever. It, it is what it is. But I was fucking in love. Oh, PDQ. If you only knew. Why was I crying in a fucking Jeep in the middle of fucking Washington Street, West Washington Street? And I, like, it would always boil down to that shit. I don't know why. I get really drunk and I bring it up. When I was sober, I never did. Like, I knew what was happening, and I'd just be like, da da da, you know. But when I get really drunk, that's when our problems would happen. Right? Like, yeah. Crickets are always here. One's outside. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and get my shit together because I don't want the demise of me to be alcohol. I want to go out in a cooler way than that. You know what I mean? Like a plane crash. Like a fucking something wild. Not, oh God, she drank herself to death. I'm not. Mm -mm. Or she was deep sea diving. Fucking shark came and ate her ass. You know, something cool. I don't want to. I want to go out cool wise, or you know, or in my sleep. Not ideal, but I definitely don't want to drink myself to death like my fucking mom did. That's terrible. I wonder. I always wondered. Like she was such a so fucking smart, brilliant. Like she was so smart, she was retarded. And what I mean by that is like book smart. Oh, she was there. You could give her a fucking math problem. That's why she was a stockbroker. You could give her a math problem and she would know it off the top. 
I could literally smoke a blunt or smoke a joint in front of her. And she'd be like, what's that smell? And me and Meredith would be like, it's a new instant, mom. She'd be like, well, I don't like it. Burn another one. And I mean, that was on replay for like 10 years or our entire middle school, high school year. We would just sit there and she'd be like, I don't like this smell. Meanwhile, if I would have pulled that shit in front of my dad or Lana, they'd been like, fired up, motherfucker, where's it at? We know that smell. You know what I mean? But my mom was so fucking stupid. Like, she was book smart. She was fucking there. Like, she did my homework. She made me pass everything. And she had fucking a lot of money, too. She's just super smart. And then my dad conned her in. My dad thought she was hot and whatever, but totally out of her league. And my dad, you know, hit it with a hot chick one night and then she fucked around and got pregnant. But no, she, she figured out and she fucked up. And you got me, but still, my mom was fucking stupid. I don't know. She didn't have any street smart. None at all. This motherfucker could like, she had a photographic memory. Annie's the same way. My oldest sister, like they're just stupid smart. And that's why Annie's a, like the big wig. At, well, every once now I've been doxxed. My whole family has for years. That's why it's so funny. Like even my history in me with the Italian and, and that YTR, I don't give a fuck what you say. Hell, it was surprising to me too. Annie's a big wig at um, Sally Mae and everything because they're just so fucking smart when it comes to numbers and just like all that. The difference between my mom and my sister Annie is Annie has street smarts too. You fire up a blunt in front of her and try to tell her it's innocent. She's going to fucking sue you and be like, you're a fucking liar. And I'm going to figure out a way to motherfuck you. Whereas my mom would be like, huh, it stinks. Okay. And then she just sit there with like this blank look on her face. We all knew she wasn't all there. Like She was just so smart. She's too smart for her own good, man. No street smart whatsoever. Oh, my God. And she was really nice and had a soft voice and very small. And then you had my big-ass dad, who was just, like, mean, and then my stepmom. <laughs> and then here comes Lana, young and tough and all that. Oh, God. I don't know how I was ever... Like, I used to look at my mom and I said, you are not my mom. There is a mom out there that is desperately seek like seeking me. You stole me from a hospital somewhere, blamed it on my dad, and here we are. There is no way I came from you. I could literally sell her on a bullshit lie anytime. Like, the biggest and, like, the bigger bullshit it was, she'd believe it even more. You could say, and she'd be like, oh, my God. Yeah. Anytime I got in trouble, I could totally overtalk my mom. I'd be like. It's their fault. They did this. And my mom would just be like, oh. she go into the principal's office and she'd be like, I don't think that Katie would do that. She would always like clench her pearls and look up to the sky like she didn't understand what was going on. Meanwhile, my stepmom would be there and be like, oh, she did. No. And my mom would be like, I don't think she did. I don't think she knows those words. Lon would be glaring a fucking hole in my fucking face. And then my dad. My dad would be like, what the fuck do we got to do to get out of this situation? Meanwhile, my mom's like, I really don't think, you know, she's off in La La Land. That's just my mom, though. My real mom. Always in La La Land. Like, you, you, she'd be staring off to the right for no reason. I would literally be talking to my mom and I'd be like, hey, she just always did that. She's a weirdo, man. She'd like stare off to the right side. Everyone knew that she had like that. We're like, she was in a different planet. Like, hey, mom. I got four suspensions and I need you to sign this. And she'd be like, I wonder how many atoms are in the fucking class or something like that. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Just sign this shit. And yeah, atoms and all this. And she was always big in the science and stuff. She'd be talking crazy fucking smart shit. And I'm like, what the fuck? Just sign this. And yeah. Do you need some shrooms, mom? Or, or are you just constantly on them? At this point, I don't know. I always side-eyed her, but she got me out of a lot of fucking trouble. Meanwhile, my dad would be half drunk and be like, oh, no, maybe she didn't do it. And, like, my mom would be looking up the sky and be like, no, Ron, she didn't do that. You know? And my dad would be like, yeah, maybe she won't. 
And then I had my stepmom sitting there like, that son of a bitch did it. She orchestrated it. She had a whole fucking profile. She got other kids to get up to it. And I would always, I'd just be like, Lana, you fuck. Trust me. Lana always knew what I was up to. My dad would totally give me a pass because he'd be like, yeah, I don't think so. He go, he was so in love with my mom and she was so fucking retarded. I never understood it, but my dad's half retarded too. And I mean, it makes sense. Then I have a stepmom that is totally self-aware of everything. Street smart. She knew exactly what was going on. She'd be glaring on. I'd be like, mom, I have no idea. Dad, I have no idea. And I got this bitch in the middle. <sighs> She'd be like, she's the ringleader. Unbelievable. Oh, but anyways, here we are, 34 years later. 30, well, 37, but back then. She just knew. She was a dick. She's always a dick. Always get interfering with my hustles. I could hustle my dad, I could hustle my mom, and then she'd intervene herself and ruin everything. So I made her out. She's attacking me again. She's being mean to me again. And then my fucking retard mom and my retard dad, and they'd be like yeah yeah she is but also she pissed my dad off like she just had her way about her but she uh, she always try to get in between shit like leave me alone I know you're hustling my dad and he's a big hot dude and he's half stupid and has a lot of fucking money and I know what the fuck you're doing so let me hustle my own parents and whatever sometimes she got involved and it pissed me off like so let me get involved real fast you know what she's doing <laughs> Dude, it's always been like that. Like, me and Lana are on the same level where my parents weren't. Like, my dad's not all there. And my mom's not really. But they're all there, but they're still, they're just like fucking alcoholics and shit. She was just a pothead. And man, she'd be trying to hustle my dad, and I'd be like, trying to hustle my dad a different way. But sometimes we come together and have a giant hustle. She's way younger than my, my dad. You gotta understand. My real mom was a lot older. My real mom, when she had me, she was older. My dad is 14 years younger than her. And my stepmom is 10 years younger than my dad. So I have every age group, you know. At the time, when I was younger, like, Lana was only... Lana never had a job. She worked at White Castle, lived with her grandma. And my dad put an ad out for a secretary. And he had a bunch of qualified ladies come in. He hired one named DJ. DJ was gold. I always, I, I'll love DJ forever. And then Lana comes in in a mini skirt and all this. Doesn't know how to, whatever. My dad's like, oh, and it's like, she's hot. And that's how it happened. He'll tell you that too. She never went the fuck away since. Listen. I've been with my dad since I was very young. We have a routine. You know, he came, picked me up. I'd sit at the office, whatever. If we went out on moving jobs, it was one of those things. And then we always went out to eat. And I remember one time my dad asked her to go out to eat. And that was it. She's been around ever fucking since. And she was young, too. She didn't have a pot to piss in, a window to throw it out of. Worked at fucking White Castle. Now she's done a lot. So since she's been married, so she did all that. She worked. Well, she didn't have to work until my dad got sick, which was like, 10, like maybe 15 years ago she went back to school and got her bachelor's degree or whatever the fuck she went to college man she did she got her little degree and all that i'm proud of her she went and did that and now she's working in like legit office buildings and managing cds's and stuff now she's general manager and shit good on her from working at white castle to not having to work but acting like she was a secretary for a while and then yeah she's come a long way She told me, I don't know, I was probably like 26 or 27 and we were into it real bad. And she said, your problem is, or I don't know when, along the way, she was like, problem with you is, is you got your dad's street smarts and your mom's, you know, some of your mom's, and I don't can't remember how the fuck she said it. She said, and that's why you're dangerous. Like pretty much you're in between. 
And I don't know, that has stuck with me ever since she said that. And I was about 10 years ago or whatever. And she said, yeah, you're dangerous because you're in between. You, you know what you're doing, but then you don't. I'm one of those things. And I think she was fucking right. 100% right. Because I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. But but I'm also not going to let you fucking hustle me either. So I got a little bit of the straight. I got a little bit of like the stupidness from my mom. She wasn't stupid by any means. She's very fucking smart. Unbelievably smart. And then I got the street smarts from my dad. I got the middle. I'm like dead in the middle. But then I also have huge blind spots too. That fucked me up. Very bad. But I was raised by a man my whole life. And Lana. Yeah, good for her. She went back to school. She got her. She went and got her first degree, and then went back and got like a business degree. And now, started out working as an associate, a clerk at um, CVS, and then she became a manager. And now she's a general manager, Pendrix County. And I don't care; it's all over. The, like you can see it on the internet. Now she is the general manager of CVS in Pendrix County. Makes damn good money. She keeps saying. Well, I could put you in part time or whatever. I'm just scared that's gonna fuck up my insurance. But I'm I can't sit there behind that like ringing out motherfucking candy bars and makeup and shit. I'd rather I got to keep moving. I can't. That's too slow pace for me. I'd rather hustle my ass off bartending or serving a table because I'm just more comfortable with that. I can see me getting bored and fucking off and going on my phone. And then when someone comes up to the register, I'm like, what the fuck do you want? I'm literally in a Twitter war right now with fucking rattle can Ron or fucking, you know, you don't understand my life. This is very serious here. Well, we're CBS people. And whenever um, the seasons change, like, they got some skulls at CVS. When the seasons change, my mom is going to go through and get all the skulls for me. Because right now, they're just too expensive. They're $39.99. The good ones that are like. But once the season comes up, yep, I got that advantage. And I always know when shit's going to go on sale. And we have endless amounts of fucking candy. <laughs> And she always tells me when my lipstick's going to be on sale or the foundation that I use. If Elf is going on sale, like my Friday surprises are a lot of makeup sometimes. She knows the deals. Like, I don't know, it was like six months ago. They had a bunch of clearance on uh, the pizzas and stuff. That's how I got all those pizzas because they went down to like $2 a piece. The Giorno's. So once like the sale goes on or whatever and you give it a couple days and they're not selling, she'll go in and buy it all and whatever. So we hell, they got tons of them there. I got a bunch too, but I get a lot today. And then um just a lot of like dumb bullshit. When the makeup goes on sale and stuff, she'll pick it up. She does all the higher and fire in, in Hendricks County. a good honor and I don't mind saying it now because well they doxed us what four months ago and everyone well they figured out I worked at Texas Roadhouse I'm not going to say how but big fucking deal I've worked at Texas Roadhouse for what a couple years now big fuck um, and my mom works at CVS and my dad is retired VA and all that he um, he's retired military and then he well not he retired after eight years so I don't know if that's full retirement he still gets VA benefits and then he started his moving company. Other than that, what else, what else did YTR try to say? Oh, so we did the little, I did that blood shit. What was it, about four years ago? And I found out I had Italian. I always thought I was like German and Irish and a little bit of Native American. But when we seen Italian, ended up going back to my grandma who was adopted. Wayne is not. 
No, that, that's another thing. How are you going to say that I don't? Bitch, it was lie. How are you going to motherfucking say when my goddamn results were saying, and we all were like, what the fuck? Where did Italian come from? And then we were, it was not on my mom's side at all. That can all be traced back. Like this bitch really doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about and offends people while doing it. Like she said, look at her. She don't look anything like, how are you going to say that? She can just look at that. I mean, and what we live in today. Okay, whatever. All right. Fuck her. I only did the fucker. I only did the motherfucker live. So I'm a big fat liar. Who the fuck do you think you're talking to? I am not a chunk like a bodega or anything like that. I am the OG of the DC. I'm not going to say something that I don't have receipts to back it up. Hell, we did that. That was live. What, four or five years ago? That was the debacle for like two weeks then. I had to find out who the fuck was the foreigner in my family. Yes. So tell me again. I'm a motherfucking liar. Oh my God. That's what pisses me off. It's like the obvious shit. Like these people come on the scene. New people like YTRs and other people like that. And act like they've been here for years. Was I lying when I put up the res the results on the screen and we ended up like digging deep? That, that was all a lie? Get the fuck out of here. I'm not a paid actress. Jesus Christ. That's I think that's what gets under my skin. Like these new people that pop up and act like they fucking know. You're not going to rewrite history for me. You can for the yabas and the whale juices and all that. But hell no. And again, I will say it proudly. You've never seen me drop a fucking private screenshot. If you come to me in private or if we're in a DM or something, you can get goddamn guarantee. That's, that shit will never go live. Ever. I don't give a fuck if you told me you're a killer. I'm not going to do it. I've literally been able to maintain off of my own fucking word. When am I going to start? Just like, oh, it's going to come up. It's going to come up here in a week. This is why I'm saying this. I will never sell out a fucking person. I don't care. What they send me, private messages are private messages. Fuck you. I'm not I'm not going to show out anyone. So when they're trying to make me look like a dick and I say, no, I'm not going to sell out anyone. Either you're going to fucking believe me or you're not. That's it. And I don't give a fuck who don't believe me. Or, really, I don't. I got my own subscribers and shit. I ain't involved in your world. But I am pissed that I got small fucking trash bags. Well, juice. Hey, I've been calling tell for that for years. Hell yeah, I'd wear it. No, I don't know. It's Trump, though. I'm not. Sorry, I, heard, I always got to speak out my text messages as I type it. I don't want to see a Trump mugshot. No. I love Trump. I do. So here's my thing with Trump. Like half of me is just like, you are a total fucking dick. And then I got this other half of me that's like dying because he's hilarious. And I'm just like, yes. Just say it like it is. I mean, honestly, if I was a president, I'd be the same. I'd be a Trump. Like, who knows from day to day what I'm going to say, what I'm going to do, and fuck you too. And But at least, you know what? This country needs to be ran like a goddamn business because being ran like shithole that it is, it's not helping anyone. So what are we going to do? What are we going to do? America used to be the strongest fucking nation in the world. We are not. We are not. We go into World War Three. We need to worry about China, number one. And they're in Russia, too. Biden ain't making no fucking friends over there with that fucking crazy fuck. Um, what other president has shook, has shook the fucking hand of North Korea? I, I mean, I'll wait. No. So, let's give the Democrats what they want right now. Let's just, at, at this point, let's do a military government. Actually, you know what? Fuck it. World War III. I'm down for it. Martial law. We need to knock some sense into people and get them to it. Or we're all fucked at this point. We are literally that fucked. United States of fucking bullshit. End it. Bring on the nukes. At this point, just end it all.
there ain't no hope for any of us. I mean, we're all so one way or the other. It's a terrible thing. It's terrible. PDQ, stop it. You're part of the problem in America. And the ones like you, uh, you know, I'm a Christian and I got to have, you know, forgiveness. And I'm not even rich and I can say this. I ain't got a pot to piss in. But if I had to pick one party, it'd definitely be Republican because I do not stand behind the other bullshit. I mean, there's mixed in everything, but. Nah. No, I don't like how anything's going. I haven't for a while. When Trump came in, I was like, oh, little hope. Even we were getting entertained, too. You didn't know what the fuck was going on. This was the best shit that's happened in the United States history ever. And we're living through it. And we are living this shit. We finally got a president that's not going to put up with bullshit. Like, no, fuck this. Fuck you. And then you got the others. God. Evil will never win. That's why you got the demons. Trying to suffocate Trump right now. Trying to suffocate him out of the fucking election and shit. We'll see. I believe DeSantis or someone else will step up. And then they thought Trump was a fucking problem. No, Trump just set set the bar. Now everyone is going to try to top that. The Santa sent a whole fucking plane, to Mar a plane of fucking immigrants to Martha's Vineyard. Are you kidding me? That's my next president. There, hey Trump, you're in jail. I would love to vote for you, and I hope that you are there. I really would, but you know what? My next vote is going to DeSantis. He's another one that don't give a fuck. We need people who have got balls. I'm tired of the old shit like Pelosi and fucking Biden. What the fuck good has happened yet? How about the fact that he told Maui, America stands with you. Did you forget they are? Even their mayor literally mouth dropped. This is bad. But evil. Evil, I tell you. We'll always try to collect a big following. That's what's going to happen. And they do. They're, they're getting their following. But good will always win. Always. Yes, they will. Good will always win. I need to be a preacher. <laughs> Oh, fuck them both. I, I can't stand Republicans or Democrats, but what I love to do, Democrats get so fucking worked up. Republicans really don't care. They're just like, okay, fuck you then. And like, fuck off. I don't give a fuck about any of them. Libertarians or any of them. I just love to troll. And the thing is, is Democratos always get so fucking worked up out, over nothing. Like this whole speech right now has got them in a tizzy. Has got them fucking boiling and shit. I even troll Republicans and shit. At the end of the day, if you really know me, you know, my, I don't give a fuck about me. I'll wear a Trump shirt. I'll wear a Biden shirt tomorrow. Just to stir the goddamn pot. No one's ever sent me a Biden shirt, though. And that tells you everything you need to know, does it not? I got this one. I got Trump, guns, America. I got all kinds of Trump shit that people have sent me. No one has ever sent me a Biden shirt, an Obama shirt. I did get a, what was his name? What was that? I can't remember. I got I agree. It's too big now. I can't remember what the fuck I did with it. It was another one. I think it was a libertarian. You know, I just like to troll. I don't give a fuck about all of it. I don't care. I legit don't care. There's something about the Democrats. They always get worked up. So I love to troll them the most. Oh, fuck. I missed 1111. How dare you? PDQ. And your fucking Democrat ways. You made me miss a chance to make a wish. 
That's all right. I got to go pee. Just like a Democrat. Don't care. You're like, so what? Everybody else got to pray. Come on, Riley. We aren't taking this. Uh-oh. If I had to pick one, I'm definitely not going for a retard like Biden. Shit. No shit. No shit. Who cares about any of it? At the end of the day, who gives a fuck? None of them give a fuck about us. Like, they're all out there fighting. Whatever. The rich are getting richer. The poor is getting poorer. There is no middle class. Um, at this point, anarchy. At this point, anarchy. That's what I'm for. I don't give a shit. I do. I love to troll and whatever. I do think Trump is hilarious, but I also think he can be crazy sometimes. But you know what? Maybe we need crazy. Biden just is terrible. I like um I like this new one. I can't remember. And he's actually he's a little I you know. I hate Pelosi. And you know which one? You know what? I hate them all. Fuck them all. At the end of the day, just fuck them all. They don't give a fuck about you. I don't give a fuck about you, me, none of us. Probably preparing for the end. So now on October 8th, everyone in the world is going to get an emergency alert and all that. Well, why? Why? Okay, whatever. I get it. But why hadn't, why hadn't it always been something that we've done all the time then? If this is the new way. I'm telling you, they're preparing us for something big. And then the next time we hear that alarm, it's going to be because fucking nukes are getting dropped over. Who knows? I think we're, we're probably living in the end. But who doesn't ever say that? I feel like this has got to be. Shit is wild out here. Now aliens are real. We are the aliens. What are you talking about? We are the fucking aliens. Um. I think they kind of prepare us for everything. Like, you know, we've been hearing about aliens since fucking Star Trek and all this. And now all of a sudden, alien, no. Aliens are demons. Anything to distract you from God. Okay. AI, technology, all this shit. It's all going to come down to it. You have your own salvation. I have mine. But listen, I don't give a fuck if you think God's not real or whatever. I ain't going to cross the line. If you want to cross the line and do that, but hell, if he is, or what do you got to lose? That's where faith comes in. I will not cross the line. I believe there's got to be a God up there. There's too much talk about him. There's too much, just like with everything else, there's a little bit of truth to everything. I'm not crossing that fucking line. God's a merciful God. He'll understand when I get there. I tried like hell. And you should too. I don't give a fuck if you're a Democrat or whatever the fuck you say you are. You should at least get right with God. You got nothing to lose. Nothing to fucking lose, but a lot to gain if you believe in it. And people do, and they gamble. And that's just like, you know, you can say, oh, the universe, the good vibes and all this, bring it on. I mean, whatever you believe in, but at the end of the day, it's too much talk about this God and this Jesus and shit in every fucking culture, every fucking, there is some form of it. There's got to be some kind of truth. And gosh darn it, I'm not even going to say GD right now. I'm not crossing the fucking line with that. 
Because this is bigger than me, bigger than you, whatever. You either believe or you fucking don't. And then's the rules. You got other commandments and have that. And if you believe, then follow this. Just like anything else you believe. Uh -huh. So whatever, if you believe in fucking the universe and the sky and the fucking moon, well, when you die and you're based in the moon and shit, you know, I hope the moon's merciful and all this. And I, I mean, you hear all about the moon and the vibes and shit like that just as much as you hear about God and you hear about that. There's got to be some truth to both sides, you know, and the way I relate it, you got good and you got evil. The tarot cards, the fucking all that, all this shit. Which which side do you take it? You know? I don't know. I, I like to entertain myself with both, but at the end of the day, I'm going to go with God. I don't know. It just feels better. It just feels right. And... So what if I'm wrong? All right, if I'm wrong, we're going to hell anyways. But if I'm right, I'll have a chance of not being fucking misery. You know, afterlife or whatever. Whenever we get reincarnated, I think we get chance after chance after chance. We're all just probably reincarnated. I don't know. And at the end of the day, I choose to believe in life. Um, you play, you pay. Oh, let's just, let's just get this channel fucking shut down. You play, you pay. I don't give a fuck. Fuck you and your abortions. Nope. There'll be none of that. So if you're a rape victim, if it's something like that, okay, there's exceptions to the rules. Nobody's saying that there's God, gosh darn not any fucking exceptions to the motherfucking rules. But if you ask the ones that want to run with it with a fucking torch, yeah, of course. Oh, you're bad fucking people. No means if you're out here whoring around and you get fucking knocked up and you decide, oh, I don't want this kid, I'm going to turn it. No, that's not an option for you. Now, are you a rape victim? Do you have some kind of medical condition? Do you got something like that? Okay, understandable. That's, you know, but other than that, no, fuck you. <laughs> you play, you fucking pay. And I'm the biggest whore on the fucking, and probably on the west side. But I'm careful enough not to get myself knocked up. So if I can do that, even being fucking blackout drunk, why can't you? Why the fuck can't you? No excuses. And I don't give a fuck who's going to fucking tear me up tomorrow on Twitter for it. Make sure you take your fucking clips. I'll stand beside it sober. That's how I feel. No, fuck that. No. I don't even know my body count, but I still haven't made that fucking mistake. And you know what? You can do that too. And I'm an alcoholic that gets blackout drunk. But yet I've not made that mistake. No, no. You fucking play, you pay. Period. The end. And them's been the rule since I've been a kid. Even before I even knew what sex was. I just I knew that was the rule. Well, maybe not. But around those times, you know what I mean? That's it. There's exceptions to the rules. We're not saying that, but fuck this. And I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and say it. There are man jobs and there are woman jobs, okay? I'm not gonna be out fucking riding the bulldozer. I'm not going to be out there fucking picking up 50 pounds of nothing and beyond. Uh-uh. I'll be your local waitress and your bartender. I am not doing a man's job. Man, men have jobs and women have jobs. And that's it. And that's how I feel. And I don't give a fuck who wants to disagree with me or not. That is it. Now, if you want to be like a butch or a lesbian and do a man, that's on your whatever gender bin, then go ahead. Like, whatever. I'm not stopping you from that. I'm, I don't give a fuck if you do that. But I'm also saying, me as a woman, yes, I'm an asshole, but at the same time, you ain't going to see me doing, like, electricity, ele fucking cleaning out the gutters, fucking, no. Power washing my son, hell no. Painting? No. Riding a bulldozer? No, hell no. No. That's all I gotta say about that. I said, do not hurt my little ones. And that too.
yeah, let them do whatever the fuck they want. I don't care. They want to do that but for me. No. I feel like mowing grass is a man's job. All right. That's why I demand. Well, I don't demand. I, I expect my dad to mow my grass. I don't have a, a guy here to do it. My backyard, if he could fit his tractor in there, he would. It is. There's so many holes and he's got a little old dump. So I do that. But if there wasn't that, I would, my dad would mow my grass and shit. That's just the man's job. You know, women plant flowers and garden and shit like that. The men mow the grass. The men make the bacon and the women sit at home and fry it. And look, you know, fucking PDQ is so mad right now. <laughs> I don't care. That's how I feel. I don't care. I really don't. My dad with a fucking pacemaker and boots on his feet still won't let my mom carry in a case of water. My mom does not carry in groceries from the car. My mom does not mow grass. Um, there are certain things like it doesn't matter if it takes my dad two hours longer than it used to or whatever. He's going to do it because he's not going to let my mom do it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. That's how I was raised. I guess it's all just a matter of how you're raised or maybe just how you feel or whatever it is. Even to this day, my mom is not, if my dad is in the car, my mom's not driving. My dad drives because he's the guy. That's just how it is. You know, I don't know how else to explain it. Now, me and my dad, I'll fight because he drives too slow. And I'll be like, no, fuck you. You're in the passenger seat. But still, he's got to be in the front seat and have some kind of control. And even then, he fucking gets mad and whatever. But nine out of ten times, it's like my dad drives. If he's not in there, then, yeah, it's a different story. But. There's certain things. Just don't do. Like my dad, he always gets the plate first. For some reason. Our, like that's just the, them's the rules, man. My dad always gets his plate first. And then me and my mom, my mom makes ours or I'll make ours the next. That's just how it goes. And that's how it should be. Sin Scully, who the fuck you think you're talking to? Where's my big old strapping man? Where's that fucker been for four years? I take out my own trash. I do everything. But if I'm married, motherfucker, you're going to take out the trash and you're going to mow the motherfucking grass. And yes, you're going to do the man shit. You're going to work on the car. I'm not going to be out there doing it. Are you kidding me? Sorry. I don't give a fuck if you agree with me right now or not. But if I'm telling you right now, if I live with a man, he's going to fucking do the manly shit. He's going to take out the fucking trash. He's going to do all that shit. Or I'll be alone and do it my goddamn self. Hell no. Nope. Here's another thing that'll blow your fucking minds. We always, well, most of the time we pray, sometimes in front of camera we don't or whatever because, well, no, it's not even then. We always do. Every time we eat like, like a big family dinner, we always pray. My dad always prays unless he passes it down. And my mom never gets that on her. Because that's the wife. But, I, you know, I'm the kid. If I want it or whatever, or another man, then whatever. But always, my dad prays. Then's the rules. And you just know. You end up just like fucking, that's just how it is. But every once in a while, I'm like, I want to lead us in prayer. Because I'm trying to manipulate my parents or some shit. i like, God, thank you for everything. Thank you for this meal. Thank you for my lovely parents. They're so great. Thank you for their attitudes, their charisma, their personalities. My dad will just like open his eyes and I'll be like, and thank you for allowing them to buy me a sack of weed this a Friday and for the dinner. I'll be gaslighting them and God, and I'll like peek out. My dad will be staring at me and I'm like, dear Lord Jesus Christ, amen. And I'll end it real fast. Dude, I've always been good for that. But I'm always a peeker too. I'm going to see if my, if my dad's looking at me and then I know we're in trouble. Lana never looks. She knows her fucking place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But she knows her fucking place. I remember being a kid and like gaslighting up to them. Like, thank you, God, and on your birthday. And thank you, Santa Claus, 
for bringing me um, the new bike that I wanted. And I'm, I'll be like tie dyed and everything. Like I ain't even trying to peek at my family, you know, at my parents or anything. Thank you for the Barbie that I wanted and the and the outfit and all that. Thank you. I was like manifesting shit before I even knew it was manifesting. And I keep my eyes so tightly closed. Be like, good Lord Jesus Christ, amen. And then immediately look down at my plate. Yes. <laughs> and I'd be like, thank you, God, before it even happened. So then my parents felt a little more obligated. I've always been good for that. Now, listen, you can either learn it here or read about it in my book. My dad does not do the laundry unless my mom asks her ask him to. My dad don't lift a fucking finger. I mean, he'll do the dishes just to, like, impress my mom, probably because who knows what the fuck he's after. I don't, whatever. My dad don't clean. He don't do nothing. And if he is doing something like that, I know he's up to something. Like, he's wanting something from my mom. He don't do laundry. The other day, oh, my God. The other day, he was pulling the uh, blankets off the couch, and he was like, they need to be bleached. Why did my dad pour a whole, like, a half a bottle of bleach? He was like a half. And he thought the fumes were going to, like, kill the animals and all that. This motherfucker bought a whole half a bottle. He don't know what the fuck he's doing. But it didn't harm anything. And actually, it made the house smell good. And my mom liked it. But no, that was the first time I've ever seen him. I, I've probably seen him fuck with the washing machine maybe two or three times in my entire life. He will do the dishes. He will. Mainly because my they get stacked up. And he cannot stand a dirty kitchen. So he'll do the ditches, dishes and, like, wipe down the counters. But anything else, that's all my mom. And she don't even, like, she knows it's her job. You know, but he he don't do the laundry or anything like that. Hell, when I got older, I started doing laundry, too. All of our laundry. Not just mine. Everybody's laundry. You'd have stacks in the laundry room. Here's another thing. My dad will not let my mom cook on the grill. No. The grill is this thing. And actually, truth be told, that's my fucking grill. He was the one who carried it over to his house. Like, oh, I need to use it. I'll bring it back. Haven't seen that fucker in two years. That was that new grill that I bought. Remember, I had it maybe six months. His ass brought it over to the house. And that was it. That was all she wrote. My fucking $300 grill. That was back when I had money. And I could fucking spend money on a grill like that. But no, my mom's not allowed to touch the grill. No, when I go over there. Like, I'm disrespectful to my dad. Very much so. I shouldn't be. But my dad's a fucking asshole. And I shouldn't be. But I am. So, if I want something cooked and I'm over there and I just want it just right the way I want, I'll cook it. And I'll say, it's my grill. But growing up and shit, no. But also, my mom's not allowed to touch the grill either. That's his area. I can't remember what I was cooking something and I just didn't want my dad to fuck it up. Not like he would, but I was just on one of those rolls and I was like, oh, I'm going to cook it. Spent all this money on steaks, put it on there and the fucking grill got caught ablaze. And this is out in my backyard. This is before my dad took it. My mom, we were all in there and the grill, I come back out and I said, oh my God, the grill's on fire. Lana rushes out there. Oh, my God. Runs back into the house. Starts filling up water buckets and shit. Like, we have, like, $100 worth of steak on this fucking grill. My dad. His big fucking self. Moses out there. I'm not kidding you. The fucking grill's on fire. I'm ready to call the fire department. Like, shit, it's going to burn down my house. Lana's like, pull it away from the house. I'm getting water. We're freaking out. My dad lights a cigarette. It was like. I've never been so mad at my dad before in my life. I said, dad, what the fuck are you doing? He looked at me and said, what the fuck do you want me to do? Hundred dollars worth of fucking steaks, just a blaze on the ground. Lawn is grabbing water. I'm freaking out. My dad's smoking a goddamn cigarette. Oh, don't get me started on this shit. He, and he pisses me the motherfuck off. The fuck do you want me to do? Kind of like 
when we were going down Alligator Alley and I accidentally tripped over the fire extinguisher when we were in the cab of the truck. My dad's hanging out the fucking driver's side window. I can barely breathe. And I'm like, Dad, what do I do? He said, every man for himself. I had to go back to the vent of a trailer, of, of the cab, of a fucking Peterbilt and stick my face up to the vent and gasp for air. My dad didn't care. Just like he didn't care when we were on fire that day. He lit a fucking cigarette and said, what the fuck do you want me to do? Lana's fucking getting pails of water. I'm screaming, trying to get the animals out of the backyard. Royal's running in circles. Roxy is too. We got a fucking fireball. All the stakes going in flames. I... That's like the time we get a call and we're living out in Greenfield. My dad had like a warrant or something. I can't remember what the fuck he had. I was like 15 years old. Uncle Gary's sitting there. Gary's drunk as fuck. My dad's drunk as fuck. Well, where we lived on the country road, like you would see the boys coming in and then literally people would call down like they're coming, they're coming, they're passing my house. And they knew they were coming for my dad at this point because they had passed the house that was like maybe like a half a mile away from ours. And they're like, they're coming. I've never seen my dad move so fast. This fucker. At 200 and whatever odd pounds, six foot six. Literally, probably four steps made it. And I say a half an acre. Over a creek, through a fucking cornfield. Next thing you know, we see the fucking cops coming up the driveway. Gary's drunk as fuck. All new cops. I had never seen them before. And all the cops know us and whatever. And they're like, where's your dad at? I was like, I don't know where he's at. I ain't seen him. Meanwhile, that motherfucker done hit the hills about two seconds before you got here. And he was gone in four steps. That's how big my dad was. I mean, he still is. But at the time, he was in his front. Uncle Gary sitting there on the fucking table. Gary had a fucking warrant for his rest for God knows what. Well, anyways, the cops are sitting there talking to me with kids' gloves and all that. I'm like, yeah, I don't know where my dad's at. I ain't seen him. All this. Gary's drunk as a fucking I probably on a couple day venture at this point. So is my dad. So what's wrong with him? I said, I need, that's my retarded uncle. And he's excited. The police are here and he likes to see the sirens and, you know, he likes to see the lights and the sirens. If you could hit those, that'd be great. This fucker sitting there hitting the sirens and light. Fucking Gary's like, Wee! all of a sudden the fucking sheriff pulls up Ron Gray, who knows my family like nothing and knows Gary has a warrant. Pulls up. Gary's sitting there like, yeah, this fucking rookie cop has his fucking lights on and everything. And I was like, yeah. You're excited my retarded. I ain't never seen Gary move so fast. It, Ron was like, literally pointing his gun. He's like, move again. That was the day my Uncle Gary got arrested. They didn't find my dad. I don't know where the fuck my dad went for. My dad didn't come back for like a couple days. Lana was gone at that time. And I was just like, I, I ended up going, once Gary got arrested, my dad was gone. I went back in the house and I was watching TV and shit. My dad didn't come back for like a day or two. I don't know what the fuck he did. He probably went off and got drunk and fucking, who knows? But that was back in like, that was back when I was young, you know. Real young. I'll never forget that. I'm gray with that cop and said, never believe any of these people, ever. <laughs> they couldn't do nothing to me. I was 15 years old. Lana had done ran off or something at that time. She was gone at that point. My dad was gone. And this was like a Thursday or a Friday. So I had like the entire weekend to myself. And then my dad came rummaging back home, stinking, boozing, all that. Smelled like debauchery and everything. Like on a Sunday, I'm like, where in the fuck have you been? Gary's in jail. It needs to be bailed out. He's like, fuck that. They were coming to get me. Who knows? It was back when I was young. My dad was young, too. Crazy days. <laughs> that was the night my dad disappeared. Uncle Gary went to jail, and I got two days home alone. But don't worry. Don't you guys think I went without it? We always had food and shit. Right? So I literally just... 
chilled out with the big screen. And I was back when we had the big box. And I was sitting in my dad's recliner, just home alone in this. And all of a sudden, my dad comes in. And looked like he came from the wild. Like two days later, where the fuck have you been? He probably just went on. My dad used to get on like drunk bingers and go and like. Who knows what he did? Hang out with different chicks and shit like that. I don't know where he went that night though, but in four steps, that motherfucker was gone. Like, time I called my mom outside the strip club in Florida. Never mind, never mind that one. I can't even remember the whole story. I remember I called her. Can't remember what my dad was doing. He disappeared. My dad liked to disappear. He was young and, you know, he had a little kid, but he was like, oh, you're six years old. Just stay here for eight hours. Well, one time, we this is when we were in Florida. I went to a payphone and I called my mom in Indiana. And the fucking caller ID or whatever it was came up like a strip clubs thing because I called from a payphone. I don't know if it was at the strip. I don't remember it. I, I really don't. It had to have been outside. It was back when we had pay phones. And I was calling my mom because we had a phone in the house. And my dad was calling. And it came up like a strip color. <laughs> oh, boy. Never mind. I'm not even going to tell that story. That's a good one. Too much for you guys to handle tonight. Bad shit. I've never seen anyone get stabbed or know anyone who's gotten stabbed. I know people who have gotten like shot in the leg and shit and not like no one in the chest or anything that survived it. But yeah, I, mean, I don't know anyone who's gotten stabbed. Oh, yeah, I do. My dad. A lot of stabbed him a few times. What am I talking about? Yeah, I do. Yeah. That is true. The motherfucker had it coming every time, though. No, I just don't tell that story. There's some stories, <laughs> there's just some you keep to yourself. You know what I mean? Family shit. The only two things in life. That's not what I wanted to hear. <laughs> What time is it? It's only midnight. The witching hour is upon us. What are we going to see? Used to be on. Guys, my eyes are getting so bad. Where are my glasses? I mean, they're getting bad. I can't even, like, I got to, like, look cross-eyed. Why? I can't figure out what the fuck you're saying unless I, like, really... There's no voice. Bill Collins. You used to be young. What do you mean? Yeah. From Hannah Montana to now? The fuck happened? I hear him. You don't hear the crickets?
I'm gonna hear Phil Collins. Why not? Tragic or in love? What the fuck? <laughs> okay, that's a good one. Thank you, Angie. I need the fucking money because rent's due. But uh, what the fuck? Where in the hell did that come from? Oh boy. Good night, Tampa. Who rose is like hashtag Angie? <laughs> yeah, well, thank you for money, but no. What in the hell is that supposed to mean? Oh no, it's nothing like that. Hell. That's just funny that you would even ask them, like, there's no. What? What? I guess we move on. Yes, I'm so in love with tragic, and I am. Oh, shit. I just want to get to the last one. Okay. Let's my privacy. I wish I do want mirrors. I would. I'm not fucking gross, but yeah. Does he look like tragic? Consider help. That's right, Lemur. I don't know. Maybe I should get traffic up on channel right now. Why not? Yep. Here we go. You know I love Tesla. I gotta throw a Tesla song in there every now and then. All right. Thank you. 
Probably need to play this song. I need to play this song. You know, we gotta have like a soundtrack to what the fuck we do. Tampa taking up, we gotta have soundtracks. Oh, the crickets. Mercy. I'm sorry. 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 i am sorry i Oh shit, I got her next one. I got her next one. If you're gonna take your shot, then take it. Take it. If you make up your mind, then make it. Make this fast. If you ever love me, have mercy. If you call out tonight, get drunk and lonely. When I'm home and alone, please don't call oh, no, no, Stop it. Oh, here we go. If you don't believe in your heart, If this doesn't say my life, I don't know what the fuck does. This might be it. <laughs> We've been swinging and I'm and I don't care the time that you fix it. Bad life and she can't spread like it's just different. We can cross by. Makes you think you're better off with all this, but we're caught in between. I'm rocking all the place. tragic like that. I think you guys think that I do. No. Not at all. I'm... Oh, God. Roll 100% so. This song. I'm out of the life. She has one hair. So what? You know what that means, though? He's getting laid by someone with orange hair tonight. Good on him. Are you getting laid? I'm not. I'm surely not. Yes, Tampa. You go to bed. I was just trolling. No. <laughs> yeah. 
selfies while she was singing and then she had a little tantrum what the fuck is this what we're doing now are we lashing out at fans throwing microphones you can't take selfies and shit fuck you your fans are what made you if they want to motherfucking take a picture you let them in fact why are you not photobombing that fucking picture i don't know that really pisses me off like who the fuck do these people think they are Miranda Lambert, her whole debacle. Now we got 50 Cent throwing microphones at your fans. That's bad. I don't know. That's a good question, Chatter. I heard about that, Peekaboo. What's her name? Tell me her name. Tell me her name. I gotta go pee. I got OP and refresh. Shit, I can't remember her name. She's hot. I don't know. It's getting cold. I can feel the coldness coming on. I don't like cold. We all know that.
Well, anyways. Who's looking like a young Angelina Jolie? Tell me, I'll look them up. So. Kind of talking to someone. Not like that. Well, am I? Yeah, I think I am. But I can't fuck around. Man, I'm trying to be single. Not that I'm trying to be. I am. But. Damn it, Indiana. These fucking dudes. Son of a bitch. Here we go. Is it going to be back to hot? Good. Good. I can't stand the cold. I don't like the cold. I would so much rather it be hot than cold. Anytime. Yes. The cold, you can put more clothes on, and you can feel really warm, but fuck that when you can just be hot and wear barely nothing. Why in the fuck? I wish, like, I had, like, you know what's so sad? Is I gotta have people fucking walk me through life. I don't know how to do technical shit. Really? You wanna know my biggest hang up right now? Is. So, why is my, like, I gotta type <clears throat> in this little small box? How can I make my box bigger again? It used to be bigger and down at the bottom. But now I'm on the, like, I don't know how, so I'm, like, writing in this little tiny space. What the fuck? And I'm that fucking stupid. I could literally sell you an eight ball for triple the time it's, it's worth, triple the amount it's worth. I can't put a fucking sentence together online. I am that fucking retarded when it comes to technical shit. Like, what the fuck? But I end up figuring out. I love this song right now. I get up, I get down, and I'm jumping around. And the rump is some rock, it's a comfortable night. Been a hell of a ride, but I'm thinking it's time. So I got an apartment across from the park. Picking rock in my fridge, still I'm not feeling right. Been a hell of a ride, but I'm thinking it's time to go. Here we go. I'm gonna puke, cause my tax is a do. Do the best we begin with a one or a two.
So put your best face on everybody, pretend you know this song. Oh, Chris, how about that? How was it She's the worst. She fucking doubted me. Now I got to show it up. Not only did I like totally like not that I had to, it was just so easy to do. But then she questioned me on that whole Arby shit. I hate that. There's one thing. If I goddamn say that it fucking happened, it fucking happened. If I'm bluffing, I'll say, yeah, I was full of shit. I'm just trying, I'm just at the point where I'm fucking over it. So when I snap and we literally go out with a bang, it's going to be a hard one. And we're not just talking about one motherfucker. I've got a lot of them. And I'm just tired of it. I'm tired of it. I'm fed up with it. Like, I don't come after anybody. This motherfucker here, though. Hmm. Someone in my comment section today. Listen, y'all, <laughs> whenever I say what the fuck I got to say, I don't come without receipts. I don't come without this motherfucker's going to really find out here in a week. I literally, this was it. This is it for me. I gave her the last straw. I didn't even drag her for Phil like I could have. And that is too goddamn easy. Just let me drop some recordings on it. Do you want to continue? Or do you want to stop fucking covering everything I fucking put out? Not that I care about being reviewed. What I care about, this is what bothers me the most. Number one, she had my ex on that. Why in the fuck would you go into my real life? You got more balls than anyone in the OG. So she's getting the results of that, but. And then she continues. She laughed at me in the fucking hospital. I almost died. I, I had a fucking feeding tube in this fucking cunt. Laughed at me. Okay. All right. Whatever. Motherfuck you too. But can, let's move on. After that, she continued and continued. Listen, when I get drunk, I can be a liar. But when you get me at this stage, I am full of blown, full of trip. Revenge is best served cold. So go ahead. Get your goddamn punches in on me like you did in the hospital. You got my fucking, you got a scally wop of an ex I've ever had. You know how many exes I have? You pick the biggest fucking jabroni that I got at my weakest fucking moment in life just trying to want to be loved and shit like that. And you got that motherfucker up on there. Okay, cute. This, this time next year, I... Oh. I'm not trying to brag. I'm not trying to boast, but fuck. I always fuck with good looking dudes. I fucked around with someone who was not up to my par. And I said, look, I was going to try something different. And this fucker goes and swoops it up like a goddamn fucking trophy. Oh, you got the biggest shit dick I've ever fucking dated in my life on display. Hey, YTR, let's forget that I dated a fucking cop for over 10, almost 10 years. Steven. Noah, cowboy, why aren't you getting my good exes on there? Like, you want a fucking story? Let them tell you one. I was with this dude a couple months, and he's going to tell you something about that. He's going to tell you and my fucking people something about me they don't fucking know? Oh, fuck you and fuck what you're about. Eat shit and fucking kill yourself, bitch. I'm like, fuck you. Wrong.
Who the fuck them? Rolf, I'm kind of just like putting it down to size right now. Okay, so forgive him. Whatever. Who cares, buddy? You know. None of my real exes would ever goddamn dare. And well, first of all, I usually don't date losers. I've been on this streak of just fucking around with just like the worst of the worst. Like dudes that I know is not going to go anywhere because I don't want it to go anywhere. I just want to fuck and whatever and be entertained for a little bit. Look at my lineup. Look at Steven. Look at Doug. Look at Noah. Look at fucking Cowboy. Are you kidding me? Cowboy, PBR writer. I'll wait. Uh, Doug, a fucking cop. Steven, a sexy fucking beast, no matter what. I mean, he wasn't gray or spectacular, but every, his personality, every, like, get the fuck out of here. And they think I'm hung up on that shit. Whatever. Why do they got it this way? Like the biggest fucking, the turtle, the lizard, the fucking shit dick that I dated. I'm never going to leave this down. Damn. I mean, I fucked a lot of losers. I haven't dated a lot. I don't date people like that. I, I always like, these are doing better or whatever than me. And when I have a certain standard. This dude, I date, I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. Jesus Christ, I don't know why. No job, no fucking 401k, no fucking nothing. You're not even a homeowner at 40 some odd years old. Fuck you. At least when I dated older than you, they're better looking than you. Say one more thing about Playboy. Say anything about Steven. Fuck you, fuck you. And then everyone else who I've dated. Look at Cowboy. Military. But also PBR. Doug, a cop. Um, Noah. Fucking killed himself. But other than that, shit. You gotta be kidding me. I am so bothered. He is trying to ruin my life. And, I don't know. And then, oh no, we're going to take it a step further. Now you're fucking gay. Oh yeah, why not? What's that? <laughs> why not? Yep. And what? I call Hussie the F word. Well, that's exactly what the fuck you are. And when I seen Orange at that bar, what do you think the first fucking word out of my mouth was? Is, hey, how you doing? Fuck that. Still to this day, Orange is nice. But even though, even though even I said, I, I won't look past it. You show any shred of being a fucking fat, being gay to me. Oh, that no. I mean, good on you if you're gonna be with gay, but if you're fucking around with what in the fuck are you doing? You know what I mean? What in the hell? I'm no fat. Oh, I want to say what the fuck. I can't wait till I have my own website. I'm gonna say exactly what the fuck I want to say and mean it. I'm no f word hag. What the fuck is this? Just a little bothered. Whatever. We'll continue. <clears throat> no, how humiliating is that, though, PDQ? This fucker tried me. It's weird. Okay, I'll calm down. I am. I'm going to listen to your song. I think the only reason that I'm still stuck on this is because I've never ever in my life had a man 
a real man come after me like this or even try me like this other than sweetie pie but that motherfucker i i always tell you revenge is best served cold and he's living his fucking yep this motherfucker will too when you piss me off and i'm not even that in love with you it's not even a vendetta it's just like i just want to get you just to fuck you and tag team and just to see you suffer at that point I'm a fucking nightmare when you fuck me over, and I know that. That's why I got it. I can't help it. I can't let shit go sometimes. When I feel really, like, betrayed or abandoned or anything, I get so mad. And this one went even that deep. And it's like, what, you're going to go on panels and shit? What, what the fuck are you? YTR said, you made him a public figure? Why? I was like, no. Did I? Maybe I did. Maybe that's why that bothers me so much. I'm not even a public figure. How the fuck did I, being a fucking nobody in the state of Indiana with a goddamn telephone, become anything? Never did, never have, never will. And then you want to say that I made him that? I'm still pissed. I'm sorry. You see where I'm holding on to shit? Here it comes. The nerve of that little weak motherfucker. Do you know if I would have snapped on her? I wanted to. But then I realized she was half retarded. And I was like, oh, okay. I'm going to look like the shithead after this. It was like scolding a fucking child. She couldn't even sit up straight. She's rude. Okay, number one, she has no fucking manners whatsoever. She has to have daddy issues, some kind of, I don't know. There's no man in her life. If she had a man in her life and they would never let her behave that way. I'll tell you what, anytime I got a line, my dad made sure to fucking correct me. I don't get it. There's something wrong with her. And then... When I was trying to say what the fuck I had to say to the motherfucker, she sat there like a little hunched over, a little. Your body language is trying to make, you're trying to make me look like a bully right now. Dude. Through the grace of God, and it was God, and I'm going to tell you right now, and shut up PDQ, it was God. God literally protected that motherfucker and like protected me too because he knew don't snap Katie don't snap because I would end up saying her name so you're gonna tell me right goddamn now your name ain't this and you don't live there pull it up pull it up I know who the fuck you are tell me one more goddamn time I don't know who the fuck you are Ugh, pisses me off <laughs> I wanted to be evil. I would, you know, I used to have that shit in me. But at this point, I think when it comes to calling out people, like, yeah, sometimes I'd love whenever I'm talking about myself. Yeah, I like to build myself up to find shit. But God damn it, if I say that I fucking know something. I have literally never had to show screenshots in almost 10 years because I will literally look someone in the face and say, tell me I'm a liar. And they break down and tell the truth. Every fucking time. That's what I was getting her to do. She knows goddamn well. Not only has Arby had a conversation with someone else. He reached out to me. Also, did you guys have a little debate? And you know what, bitch? You know what, bitch? Emily? I ain't the one. As soon as he reached out to me, guess who didn't answer? I'm like, okay. I'm mean, but I'm not fucking evil. Hell no. I wouldn't want anyone to do that to me, but I do know people who have talked to him. And then the fucking punk ass fat fuck try to hit me up. And I'm like, hell no. How dare you? I don't give a fuck how much I hate you. I'm still not going to go to that level. Never have, never will. But it's going to come out not for me. And remember... 
everybody remember the panel that we had? You said, oh, he's not in the room. He's not. All right. Right over. But if I had to, I could show screenshots where I didn't even entertain it. I'm very closed off. If you're not like one of my mods or you're not, some, you would think I never fucking talk. People think that I never talk or whatever. I've got so many messages. I read them, whatever, but I read everything. It may take me a minute, but I'll end up getting to it. Believe it or not, if you knew me, if you were on mods, you know I talk a lot. Actually, I talk more than I should. We don't really know. But no, I don't answer emails and all that. I've seen that whole stream um, this afternoon where supposedly I'm stuck up and all this shit. And if you write an email or whatever, I don't respond. Um, no, if I know you. Listen, I've been burnt. If I don't fucking know you, fuck you. I'll read your shit. I might, I may read your shit. Probably not, to be honest with you. And if I do, and you get a response or a okay or anything, that's good. You can ask my mods and everything. I am always talk. I do talk to people. That's the funny part. I talk a lot. That's just how little you don't know me. No, I'm not going to answer back. Like weird shit. No, like I don't know. There's too many. If I had to sit there and answer emails all day, I'd be that I'd have to do it all fucking day. But I talk where I'm comfortable. That's another thing I want everyone to know. I talk where I'm comfortable. I do talk. I do know how to type back. Good mornings, fuck you. Um you know, I talk a lot in like my mod chats and shit or whatever, but on like Twitter and shit and all that and Twitter, Instagram. Uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't ever answer back anyone. YouTube, nothing. I read everything. I'm very fucking closed off, okay? But if you're in one of my, like if you're someone who I consider I can trust or whatever, I talk a lot. That's what you don't know. <laughs> But yeah, I'm bad about writing about emails and shit. It's so funny. And like, there are so many different sides to me. Like, it, it just depends on what side you see me as. You know what I mean? Like, I got this side, that side. It depends on what side you're on. On what you see me as. I got a text today. Or a message that said, like, can you even type a sentence or do you just not respond to anyone? No, I'd like, listen, I do have a hard time writing sometimes. Big time. I do. But the people who I'm close to, like, I don't worry about it because they understand what the fuck I'm saying. Probably not. I'll get better at that next year. I'll sure write emails back. But trust me, you're not going to even know what I'm saying because, I, hell, I don't even know what I'm saying. Most of that. I just got a voice text or whatever. I'll just send a heart or a thumbs up or whatever it is. But I do talk a lot once you get to know me. Actually, I talk so much that people don't even give a fuck. At all. Tell them, PDQ. Rosie. I talk all the time in my mom chat and shit. I'm thinking next time I'm going to play. And sorry for everyone who had to hear my rant. Listen, I hate that shit. I hate, like, I read all the emails eventually. 
Eventually. I don't respond back a lot. I don't respond back to anyone. On emails or anything. I just don't. I can't see from this far away. That's the problem. I have this tripod on. Hey, Anchor 11. Must be the whiskey, right? God damn, I got a problem. Shit's about to go down in about a week. That was not what I tried to play, but listen. I'm for it. I support it. Oh, come on. Oh. <laughs> right? Who wouldn't? Hold on. This song got everything started the other night. Uh -huh. 
Oh, he buys your flower. I hope he holds your hand. Give your heart his colors. When he hands his colors. Yeah, I hate that. I hate that. I fucked up. Fucking around, fine now, for sure. <sighs> oh my god. It's all good. I'll figure it out. <laughs> songs always maybe that's the state i'm in i'm just sad I'm just fucking sad fuck my life fuck everything fuck it all yep <clears throat> And here we go. 
song we're getting spied on don't look at me don't talk about me don't be around me you know what fucking sucks you know what fucking sucks Here we go. Well, first of all, <clears throat> never mind, never mind. Let's not go there yet. Through this drink, and we'll see. But I'm about over it. Oh. Now, fuck a day at a time, moment at a time, but here's the thing. So, do you want to say it right now or not? Never mind. Never mind. Anyways, what were we talking about? What was the song? Shut up, Anchor 11. I've got so much I want to say, but I got to be so careful about what I say on here. Never mind. Never mind. I caught that. Anchor didn't think that I would catch that, and I did. I was looking at the screen. I keep grabbing the top of this hat to hold on to the wig. Oh. What if I told you all? What if I told you all something and I don't want you to judge me or whatever? What if I told you all that, like, to be honest with you? <laughs> never mind, never mind, never mind. Another song. This is what Tom played before the last one. Oh, well, when we heard the whole spook and shit. <laughs> Shut 
shut up, Big Mountain. Before I played that one, or before I played the what, whatever, I'm getting drunk. There we go. Anyway, okay, before I played. Okay. But don't, oh no, hesitate, la dee da. So listen, the other night when I was going down on the screen, when I was going down on the screen, great. You know what I mean? I think that I hit another song and then I hit another, and then I hit the Bruno Mars song. That's the only logical. Or there's ghosts in here. I don't know. I don't want to believe that there's ghosts. I'm going to try to fight it every way. Every other way. Don't. Oh, no, no. Hesitate. La -dee -da. I told you it's in there. Uh, this shit sucks, right? You know what sucks? I am so lonely. I can have a million fucking people around me, but if I don't have, like, oh, no, no, it doesn't pay, Lottie, it doesn't. Fucking sucks. Oh my god, this is from Anonymous. Who's Anonymous? I gotta punch it in my little screen, but I got you. There you go. This is for you. <laughs> All it takes to fall is down. I do it till the sun goes down. Now for the night time. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'll tell you my okay, own life. Like this. You know so that this only lasts for a day. It's never the right time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go to the 
Well, how did that thing go? There we go. <laughs> yep. I don't want this song, god damn it. Get me back to the home screen. Why? Why? Anyways, that's true. Sorry, I'm listening to gossip right now. I don't know. This one will be good for me, but probably not good for the masses. You know how that goes. There's a, hold on, I'm waiting for, like, nothing ever snaps out. We've listened to it all a million times. Yeah, I mean, fuck this. How's this? Hang on. Listen, I'm a guru at finding good royalty music. Hang on. Yep. I like that.
Sorry, in between all this shit, I'm reading like a fucking heartbreaking email too. Where motherfuckers are trying me, but we live. Whatever. If I had my phone on me, yeah, I'd rip into your ass right now and whatever, but are you kidding me? Anyways, that's all I'm saying. That's why I've been like dumbfounded through this song. I'm like, surely not. Hot Fudge Sunday sitting inside me. Looking for a video hand. You know what? You guys don't care. You never did, anyways. Never. <laughs> 